Ah, game calling here, Fester 67's workshop. <laughs> That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, uh, just, I'm off, bye. And, and the guru himself. Yeah, we kind of was yattering away and forgot it was showtime, didn't we, mate? Yeah. That's what happens yeah. when you're slagging people off. You just get carried oh, away. Oh, mate, terrible. Like, Putting like the world to rights, we Gaggle of old grannies, weren't we, mate? Oh, yeah. But, oh, uh, young man, young man. <laughs> it's these days. Uh, what have we got? Let's have a looky Lou. Uh, Lynn's asking, what has she missed? I might... I've missed the beginning of the chat there because it's jumped up. But apologies you have missed for many that. things, Lynn. Many things have been missed. Uh, Sue's in saying hello to everyone. Hey, Sue. Andy's in. Uh, Grum took the eye in the sky to find them. Two men in their 30s were lifted because, yeah, they were parading around with guns. All gold, lovely. Stupid, am I? Yeah, Paul's in. Plastic monkey. Afternoon, Lynn, or evening, Lynn. Grand Afternoon, Robert evening, morning. What? Wait. He's in saying hello. Uh, and he's going big hugs uh, to Captain uh, Dreadbeard. A feeling better, big man. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, Wednesdays was cancelled. Uh, Dave was trapped at work with some IT things. Dad was in bed uh, feeling unwell, and I wasn't great myself. So it was just like, yeah. All these old people getting sick all the time. It's just ridiculous. Nah, it was just yeah, one of them, minute. You know what I mean? But yeah, back to normal. Uh, yeah. I'm I can say all there. this. I can say all this for the next like. Eight months until I'm suddenly old and I can't say this anymore. Oh, uh, yeah, because you're going to be officially 50 because you've been 49 for a couple of years now. And I've been 49 for you know, I've been 27 for about 30 years and then I was 49 last year and now. <laughs> 21 so saying before. hello to Andy. Lynn saying hello to so Johnny's in saying hello, peeps. How do Johnny? Hello. hello. All right. Hopefully my fan ain't too loud in the background, but it's a bit muggy in here tonight, and I'm a bit hot and bothered. So you need to do a massive, dirty, great Trump, and that'll keep things nice. Yeah, and so unfortunately, I'm going to keep me fan going, folks. So I'm sorry mm. if it's distracting, but yeah, I can't hear it. But then again, I'm listening on a crappy earpiece. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm deaf as a post, but it's there, it's Pump. going. But yeah, <laughs> so he did there. I won't give you tentage if you carry on misbehaving. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, old gold, yeah, yeah, rude word. Uh, F div, I know they were apparently being very stupid and threatening. Yeah, I had a double stabbing just outside my house the other day. That was great. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, so it was all cold and off. And my missus I, I... was trying to sort of get back from the shop. And she's like, I live there. I could hear her. And I went, oi, she lives here, mate. Don't fucking mind. Excuse my language, but, you know. Well, we, 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 we had a squirrel in the garden. Does that count? Does that is that impressive? Yeah, I'm impressed with that, mate. Was it a grey or a red squirrel? Oh, we wouldn't have a red squirrel around here. It's the no. north, remember? Ah, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It's the nearest yeah, I yeah. got to a stabbing or a violent, a violent act of some sort. Oh, uh, yeah, from. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, you know. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Susan, hello to Wendy. She's giving uh, Scaly Models big hugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Mike's had to pop out for a minute. Yeah, there's uh, sadly been a bereavement uh, of one of his neighbours, so he's quickly popped along just to uh, sort of uh, be with them. So Take he's not going to be in the chat in the background, but uh, our condolences go out uh, yep. to his neighbour, Bob, because although I've never met him, you get to know because of the stories you hear and that about him and that. So, yeah, it's a shame. Yep. Condolences to all involved. Yeah. Uh, apparently he's popping out in public too he says yeah Chris Connor bears in he says uh, good evening everyone there's a bear there uh, the bear. Johnny says how long before Mott Fox messes things up Die. well it's either going to be him or me you know, I resemble that remark it's going to degenerate because we're, we're trying to be that word that we're trying not to say aren't we Fox the P word profesh Oh, that word! I was thinking of different. I was thinking of a different p word. Yeah, we're and trying to really... be profesh, but it won't last that long. I was trying to think how to say that other p word without losing your monetization. But never mind. Yes, mm. I remembered this week as well. I'm learning. I'm learning. Good lad. Good lad. I've been doing Twitter pimpage as well. <gasps> You've been pimpulating. I've been pimpulating this on the boom up without prompting Ooh. and all. I know. I know. Pimpulosity. I know. Paul's in saying evening, everyone. Evening. Uh, Johnny saying hello to Chaos. Iron Man 129's in. Uh, saying evening. Colin Fox, Dad, everyone in chat. Out there, evening, mate. evening. Very, very quickly, just before you go down past it, uh, just to answer Graham McRobert, Skyrim's brilliant. Get it. There you go. Done. Skyrim's brilliant. Just get it. Just, just. Oh, yeah. It. I've got that in my Steam account, mate. Yeah. 
Graham, it's like if you get the special edition, it's like two pounds second hand. Just, just mm. get it. You'd be fine. Wayne Modder works says time to get his frolic on. Yeah, you can't beat a bit of the old Friday frolic, mate. All right, a bit of frolicking. How much you get for? A, I, 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 the joke's dead. Forget it. My free. word broke. It's free for a pound. I broke all the words then. And I'll kind of see how good he is underneath the arm. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that he, yeah. It's like Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> It's like you have to sing like Sid James laughs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lynn saying hello to Iron Man. Graham McRoberts says, Me likes a chin bing people in games. There you go. Me likes what? Chin bing? What? Chin, chin bing people in games. What's chin bing? I don't know what I mean. Oh, uh, was it poking someone on the chin with one of them? Uh -huh. Chin bing. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. I don't um, know what it means. Wayne Mother Works. Nothing. Hello, everybody. Hello, Wayne. All right, hello. mate. Some bloke called Guru in saying good evening down oh, the coffee. Bang, man, he's away. an idiot. He'll just bring the chat down. He's rubbish. <laughs> You're getting fox hugs though off of Lynn. Oh, hi, Lynn. Thank you for my yeah. fox hugs. Have you had uh, hugs off Lynn yet? I have. I had loads of huggage earlier on in the chat because I was in about half hour before the Joe, the Joe, the show the started. Joe? The Joe? The Joe? Yeah. Who's I Joe? know this bloke called Joe. Oh, Joe. Yeah, I do have trouble pronouncing things. You probably noticed. Yeah. I can't. Uh, I just, well, I just broke a sentence a minute ago. So I oh, I'm to... useless, mate. Uh, Mayhem says, good evening, Foxulation. I see you have the keys to the garage now. I do. I do. This, oh. Looks like I need a big garage as well. <laughs> <laughs> Graham McRomer says, Tom Clancy goes recon break point as well. There you go. Mm -hmm. James is in at JC Bricks and Builds. Hello, James. Hope you're doing all right, mate. Uh, the lovely Gemma Williams is in saying evening all. Hello, hey, Gemma. Gemma. You're right, my love. How much trouble is Chris in today? Yeah, is he's he in serious trouble? He's bound to have done something. I mean, let's not be naive here. He's going to have done something at some he point. He has, today. and he our, our little Ewok can't behave himself at all. No, he's only a wee little fella, but he gets into all kinds of trouble and jokes. Absolutely. Graham saying hello to Gemma and Chaos, as is Johnny. Mm hmm. Uh, what have we got there? Yeah, they're all saying hello to each other there. Cy Reynolds is insane. <laughs> Flange magnets. Say, say it in a proper voice, but Flange. Flange. Flange magnets. <laughs> yeah, he said Flange twice. Like a pronunciation goes, Flange. Yeah. Flange. Yeah, flange, isn't it? It's a flange. There you go. What is if you put right? a handle on it? It'd be a flange with a handle. Flange handles. Freight for a pound. <laughs> flange Oh, that's the best word you've ever said, Cole. Flange handles. Flange Get handles. your flange handles here. Free for a pound. <laughs> Free for a pound. <laughs> and the chat that pops up is Lynn saying, I'll come start cooking me burger. Hey. <laughs> Steady now. Steady now, Rhys. Uh, Wendy Hickson says, I had to scale modelling chaos. Cy Reynolds is going, yo. Wait, did Cy Reynolds really just say yo? Yeah, he did, mate. 1998, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, this is one step removed from having your baseball cap backwards, Cy Reynolds. You just need to just re, re could you imagine? I could imagine Cy doing that for m and m in it. Yeah, yeah, in it. Somewhere in Cy's wardrobe is something that's Burberry. You know it. He's got, I just know he's got somewhere proper baggy parachute pants as well, somewhere. Oh, oh yeah. Ding, 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 ding. I can't do too much for copyright. Absolutely. Uh, Sarah Jane's in. She says, oh, I forgot. She says, I'm a mod. First warning to Fox. <laughs> Hey, wait, what? Oh, yeah. God yeah, damn it. Sarah hey, Sarah Jane. Oh, and she's saying a further up there, hello, Fester, and the other thing, she says she's thumbed up. Oh, bless her. Thank you. Yes, we've got 12 thumbs ups already. Keep them coming, oh, yes. folks. All helps the channel. Edward Leonard's in saying hello to Sarah. Quickly uh, scroll through there. Everyone's chatting to each other. That's Johnny asking Sarah how she is. Gemma says, uh, hope you're doing okay, and Ellen is doing okay too. Yes, she's getting there. Um, she had all her splints made beginning of the week, so she's a lot happier because she's able to do more with her hands. They seem happy with progress, and she gets all her stitches out on Tuesday. So She, move, she's, she moves ever closer to slapping you, so she's happy. Yeah, my, my imminent uh, amnesty of beating is going to be ending in about two and a <laughs> half, three <laughs> weeks. So. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of hoping I'll get me phone call so that I can go under the knife and then I can say, you can't beat me because I'm recovering. Yep, I'm, I'm poorly unwell sick and I can't be slapped. Ow. 
Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Nim Sindarin's in saying hello, everyone. The rhino is being constructed. Jolly yeah. good. Good girl. Good stuff. She's, 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 she's kind of... How can I put this? <clears throat> There's a hole, and she may have skirted around the edge of it and perhaps moved in towards the centre of it. Perhaps. Is this the old, is this the old that I've successfully resisted falling into myself? Yeah, the one you totally haven't fallen into. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, is, is the one that she may have not fallen into yet. She seems to have picked up a little liking for sisters. He's looking sisters over battle. that he's Bane Blade, Valkyrie and Wasbon boxes. Yeah. yeah, definitely not fallen down that hole. No, but she's, she's fallen down the hole. She's, she's had, I think she's fallen a bit for the sisters of battle. So, ah right for the adeptus sororitas oh yeah um sue saying don't forget to give your thumbs up for uh folks mm -hmm. absolutely i know we always say it but it does help with the algorithms on the channel and it helps your content move further and further up the uh search statistics so, call, yeah, call, really call, 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 call. algorithm 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 can I just point out that even though you may not notice Edward Leonard coming to chat, you know when he appears in chat because all those locked pusses come out in chat. Absolutely, so yes, in. I have seen Edward Leonard is in as is Psycho the Fish. Yep, uh, he's also given Psy hundred XP. Oh, what for? Uh, don't know, but Psy uh, says, "Oh, fudge off, Carl." He says, "I'm far too alternative for Burberry." Yeah, of course you are. Yeah. Flange magnets, magnets for flanges. There's a comment there for Edward Leonard for you to read out. Uh, how far down, mate? Uh, talk down towards the bottom, I think, or oh, it might not be. It, it's just uh, jumped out somewhere. Looky -loo. Somewhere in chat. <laughs> uh, someone was asking about a fry up. Is that too far down? No, uh, I don't know. Oh, gold. Oh, yeah, uh, there you go. Moist fish flange handles, flange handles, flange handles. And Sai is going, silence, old man, meaning fox. <laughs> uh, JC Bricks and Bill says he's uploading a build review video. Good man. Very mm, good. Sai uh, says, I... let's keep the fish out of this. Sorry, mate. No, go on, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go on. I was just going to say, I haven't just uploaded a video, but it only finished uploading and proofing like five minutes before the stream, so I'm not going to do it till tomorrow. Yeah, because I should be putting you full screen in a minute, because you're going to get your big one out on the bench, oh, aren't you? Steady now. Yeah, so I was like, I can't make this video go live ten minutes before the live stream, because that's just taking the piss a bit, so I'll do it tomorrow. That's all right, mate. Bung it live whenever you like, mate. No. Uh, Johnny says major slappage coming. Absolutely, mate. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, somebody, somebody may have found out about activities in the kitchen, mightn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah. How did they find? Because out? she she looked at me and she went, "Go on, deny it," and I just crumbled. Yeah. You remember and how I last just week? I looked at me feet and went, "Yes, I may have touched that one on the cooker there," and I apologised for the error of my ways. Yeah, she's just noting it down in the notebook in her mind. Yeah, one she little... said, "Well, the test of the hand is going to be in about three and a half weeks for that." She says, "Yeah." yeah. She so would have no, gotten by you, then. You'd make a terrible spy, wouldn't you? You'd be rubbish at espionage. Are you a spy? No. Yeah. Are you a, are you a spy? No. Are you really a spy? Yeah, yeah. You you charged. Yeah, I'm just going to walk over to the prison cell now. <laughs> yeah. Chuck you Norris give is me in. All the, Evening, guys. You will give me all the secret codes now, won't you? Yes, you will. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll just go. It wasn't me. Fox did it and ran away. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people under that bus. He's saying uh, hello to Sarah Jane. And JC Brick says 32 and only 18 likes. Yeah, they'll get there, mate. It's no problem. Uh, well, what have we got? William, William Raven Rainbow. says... Oh, go, on. go on. No, go on. S stakes are done and he's got to go to be back in a few minutes. There you go. I think we expect photographs of that. Yeah. There's one for you as well. Look at that. He's got his Lego Dodge Charger. He's going to be building yes. on a live stream. Already pimped on different Facebook groups. And he's going to be going, oh, Dodge Charger. Absolutely, Ooh, Dodge Charger. Mm. Yeah, you pimp away, mate. Candy Graham from Mungo's in, saying greetings for everyone. Hello, Candy Graham. Candy Graham right, from mate. Mungo. Candy Graham from Mungo. And Mungo Mayhem says, Johnny is as weak as a cheap whiskey. Ah, Chuck Norris is in. Absolutely. Cy si Reynolds says, wait, if Fox is 50 now, I can gift him a walking stick for his birthday legitimately. Not till, not till the end of the year, young child. 
Yeah, yeah, not wrong with a walking stick, mate. I've yeah. got several. You probably noticed. <laughs> the thing is, if I have a walking stick, it's something I can spang people with. But you can get out of my way. Get out of my way. Well, yeah, my Jaguar one's got the long brass spike on the bottom of it. So if someone gets in my way, I'll just whack them on the ankle bone with it. Can you also, like, dip it in, like, toxic agents and be all Russian spy stab? I want one of them shoes, you know, with the old knife that pokes out, you know, you can give it a minute to that, you know. It might potentially be ever so slightly illegal. Yeah, but, you know. That's like, that's like having a gun bra or something. It's just not going to be legal, is it? Yeah, I think I'd look a bit strange walking down the street with one of them on, mate. People might think, oh, that Fester's turned a bit odd. <laughs> no, they'd be like, yeah, that's Fester. <laughs> yeah, mind you, though, you know. Or oh, they'll be thinking, free for a pound. <laughs> I'd be going, oh, yeah, you know, Fester's there, free for a pound. <laughs> <laughs> flange handles. Yeah, flange handles. Get your flange handles here. Get your bulletproof <laughs> bras here, lady. <laughs> it's got tea on it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's uh, move the camera down. Uh, go for a bit of oh, that. Uh, Chuck Norris has got to go. The wind has blown the shed roof off. Ooh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Sorry to hear that, Chuck. Not gold. A bit windy uh, down by where he is. Oh, well. Yeah, must live near Dad. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, just... Have a bit of a move round. Yeah, you will work with that. <gasps> oh, hello. He's doing things. I'm going to move Guthorm out of the way. Guthorm go. can go and be the chat dolly for a bit. I'm going to oh, prepare myself. To flop, you want me to flop it out, don't you? Yeah. I don't, do. think, I don't think flopping is one thing that your your big boy can't do, I think. Uh, or do I make <laughs> you suffer? It's, it, well, you could not go full screen. That would make me suffer. Uh, yeah, I was getting around to that. <laughs> Patience is a virtue, young fox. I will learn that one day when I find out how to do it. <laughs> no, let's zoom out a bit. Look at that big yeah. empty bench. Have you had a clean up and a tidy up? No, it's just I've moved the camera, look. Uh, they uh, have a tidy yeah. up, look. 432 yeah. was mentioned. Oh. Yeah, there's been no tidy up there, has there? No. No. No, it's I clever clever camera naive. angles, mate. I was naive to expect such things. Yeah, I tried your bench up. It's a work in progress. Edward Leonard says, flop it out. <gasps> Balls. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. All it is now is a waterfall. That is awesome. What's it made of? Rope. A rope of wood, mate. Wooden rope bridge, isn't it? Clues in the name. And what did you make it of, though? I mean, a bit of old string. String full for a pound. Some Costa coffee sticks. I thought there might be cost. I thought there might be cost available. Coffee sticks in there. And a bit of underneath there, bit of brass picture wire, just to give it a bit of support. Awesome. And does that meet with your approval? Does it? God damn it! Yeah. God damn it! Just <laughs> god damn it! <laughs> You said you wanted a rope bridge. You got a rope bridge. You got a crow's nest. You got a rope bridge. It's just a shame you haven't put any sails on it. But I think that might be going a bit too far if you stuck sails on it. But god damn it! So. No, no, something. I think a sail across there would work, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've done you it reckon, again, haven't I? What do you reckon, folks? Have I done it again? Yeah. Uh, you could. Have, I mean, a big. If you have a big triangular sail that goes from the top of the crow's nest down to the end of the cannon. Yeah, you know, well, do we have a cross brace across here? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you'd have a, like a big single sail, a single yacht. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to see a sail on it, folks? You like that rope bridge, don't you? It's I like that rope bridge. That's just the best thing ever. So, yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to with it. <laughs> I love the I love the sort of weathered wood effect on it as well. Yeah, it's got to be done, isn't it? It's a rope bridge, mate. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Just God damn it. Oh, that's just you said awesome. you wanted a rope bridge. You've got a rope bridge. Bobbin says it needs a massive flag on it. Massive flag. Massive flag. Uh, yeah. Scale Modeling Chaos says Fox now needs a change of undies. I yes, think he's had a little accident. Um, uh, it looks like Fox doesn't need a walking stick. <laughs> William Rayborn's back and says, wow. JC Bricks and Bill says insane blade, more like awesome blade. 
it's getting there, isn't it? ECI always says some flags. I do think you need to put a load of pennants on some of the uh, the angular the, ang the cables going from the crow's nest. Oh yeah, but, you know like oh. oh you know you know like like U boats used to have tonnage pennants. Every time yes. they sank a ship, they put a pennant with the estimated tonnage on it. Oh yeah, there's going to be uh, all kinds of other gabbins, but gabbins. I, I, I kind of like the idea of a sail with a big bad moons logo on it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It is required. Yeah, a triangular sound. You're a triangle. You're bad. You really are. You're putting all these ideas in your head, you damn you. I, I know. I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm doing it with thinking, possibly. Damn you and your soundness. At some point, it'll be it'll have wings and everything, and waterproof skids and all kinds of things going on. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you like that, didn't you? Anyway, anyway, I'm still full screen, and it should be you full screen. Do you want full to flop screen. it out? Well, what am I doing? I don't know. You said you was going to flop something big on the bench, didn't you? Well, I put something little on the bench first, because I have finished. It's only taken me... I only bought this damn thing in 2019. God damn it. But I finally finished my tabletop trauma centre, Lehman Russ. I know, I saw that earlier. <laughs> Done. I, I can't believe... First of all, I got a shock that I realised I bought it in 2019. It's been it's been taking that long to get this damn thing done, and then I realised it's five months since I did the last episode. I'm like, Jesus Christ! I need to get my finger out. So yeah, so it's now done, all done. I love how that dude's come up as well. I know. I just I, it's, uh, compared to the original. Yeah, the before and after photos, folks, are worth. Yeah, I actually found a load of before photographs that I didn't have before, so I need to make sure mm. I publish them. But yeah, it's all, all done, dusted now. So it's very come dusted. up nice, mate. Thank you very much. So yes, yeah, so that's uh, all done. So uh, at some point, when I can go to post offices, I can put that on sale and sell it. And make some well, money. yeah, I'm surprised. You know, I think you'll get some takers for that, mate. Because yeah, that's a nice piece, that mate. I hope so. But another news. Let me show you something rather large. Oh, this is uh, my now, turn somebody, now. somebody in chat might recognise this possibly, but I'll, I'll just show you that. <gasps> Let me just now. I'm going to say this is this might sound weird, but I'm going to show you something that smells just like Boba Fett. Okay. How's that for a wheel? Oh Get out of there! Oh my god, that How is. Yeah, that's the thing that's, is, it's it's a rubber tire, but it's solid rubber, bloody and that's all thing. metal. So that's yeah, yeah. I woke the neighbours up. So yes, and it smells. If anybody here in the nineteen seventies had an original, like at first original nineteen seventy eight Boba Fett Star Wars figure, yeah, it always smelled different to all the other Star Wars figures. It had this weird yeah. smell. This tire smells exactly like that. It's got this weird smell. Do you think it's mold released, do you think? I oh, know, I don't know what it is. It's it's the, the whatever plastic they've made it of, but there must be something different about the Boba Fett figure mm. that made it smell different. So I don't know. That is seriously nice, mate. Yeah, that's uh, issue two. I'm I'm doing the Diag the Diagostine, the fan home Dodge Charger. I've yeah. done issue one. The bonnet's all wrapped up in protective tissue, so I can't get that out to show you. Yeah, yeah. Um so I've done that. Uh, I did have a little bit of breakage in issue one, but only a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 oh. I mean, people say about the part works that they're expensive. But, well, of course they are. I mean, I, I look at the Rossi bike I've been doing, and it's a beautiful product. It really is. And you yourself are seeing that, aren't you? It's, Absolutely. You know, it's going to be, what, about five kilo in weight when it's done? That's a seriously heavy model kit, mate. Uh, this will be eight and a half kilos. Eight and a half kilos. There you go. That's exactly the same weight as a child that weighs eight and a half kilos. Yeah. Coincidentally, that is surprising. Mm. <laughs> but no, the thing is, the people that say about like part works being expensive, it's like, okay, when you get a part work, it's not, it's not, we're not talking like trumpeter or, um, you know, uh, Ryfield quality m models here. We're talking big screw together things with plastic and ABS and metal and stuff. Yeah. The, you know, they're not, they're not the most complex things in the world, but, your your Rossi bike puts it into perspective. Mm. If you went, if you bought a Tamiya, I mean, look at how much a Tamiya one twelfth scale motorbike is. Yeah, the proper top of the range one. They're like what two hundred quid, three hundred quid. Yeah, yeah. And do they do one six scale as well? 
uh, you had to do one ninth scale, and yeah, you can get one to six. But the time you throw, like you say, the aftermarket, all the detail upset, chains, and, and things like that, you'll spend another 70, 80, 90 quid on yeah. it. So, you know, I mean, my Rossi bike works out something like 850, 900 quid yeah. in total. Yep. Uh, people are going, cool, that's a lot of money, but I'm getting a motorbike that weighs nearly five kilos that yeah. is an absolute diamond piece of art. It really is. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at things like, uh, you know, you look at things like the X-Wing that I'm doing. Okay, it's not the most detailed X-Wing out there, mm. but if you, the only other way you're going to get an X-Wing that size, 118 scale, is to buy uh, an old Captain Cardboard resin kit which yes. is taken for it's mold apparently taken from a mold of one of the original studio models and they're like many thousands of dollars also mm. it's a resin model and you've got to do a lot of custom work yeah or you've got to somehow find one of the old um uh, uh, uh what were they called master replicas x-wings yeah which yeah. were probably not that accurate either and they'll be seven eight nine thousand dollars because they've been out of print for 20 years yeah so the thing absolutely about, so the thing with these part works is yeah they're kind of big and dumb but they're not overpriced not really because it's no i mean i gave up smoking as you know and that's what pays <laughs> for these for me and absolutely you know i i still think it's money well spent and when i look yeah. at that you know i mean when it's finished i'm then going to go back into it and i'm going to add a bit more refinement to it. I'm going to add some audio to it, sound effects, you know, the yeah. engine tone and, and, you've and got all to, you've of got, that lot. You've got to keep in mind as well, A, it's the size of these damn things. They're massive, mm. which if you were to buy any other kit would cost you a fortune. But also, you know, you're building it over two years. Yeah, you, You're paying for this big model, but you're also paying for once a month, you get a bit of building to do on your workbench. It's just silly fun because it's just screwing stuff together and it's, it's mindless construction. And yes. it's just simple fun. It's like... It's like grown up Meccano, and it lasts you for Absolutely. two years. Absolutely, you know, and that's I, going to be the centerpiece in the lounge. You know, yeah, it'll be slightly festivised, but in a good way. Mm. And yeah. you're probably the same with your your X wing. You know, you'll you'll look at it, and you'll think, oh, I could just add a, a little bit of foxification to it with with I don't know, perhaps a little bit of sexy weathering or whatever. I don't know the kit yeah, itself. Yeah, I will. It I will eventually repaint it. I think probably. But think, again, but, you've you know. got your own touch on it, don't you? That's yeah. the beauty of these things. You can quickly disassemble it, add a feature, and, and quickly whack it back together. So yeah. I love them. I mean, I get quite frustrated sometimes because there's two there's two arguments that come out. One is it, it's too expensive, and I can't afford it. Which is like, okay, that's a valid argument. It's yes. fine. You know, not everybody can afford uh, these expensive part works. I certainly can't afford them. I'm just lucky to get these from the suppliers. But yeah. Uh, that's one argument, and that you can't argue with that. But then there's the one that the, the people that just say it's too expensive, it's not worth that, it's ridiculous, they can charge that. And that's yeah. like, in your opinion. Yeah, um, but you look at, say, an HK kit with all the aftermarket. Yeah, and that, that's 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 the thing. It's it's it, You've got to look at the... You've got to take the view of how much these things cost to make and produce and distribute and everything else. And they're not going to sell millions of copies like a normal model kit, so they've got to get the no. money back. But the people that just say, "Oh, it's too expensive for for tat," it's like, no, you just you you're too close minded. Yeah, I mean, I look at what the molds must cost to make. You know, I mean, I oh, yeah. probably like yourself. You'll look at the piece and you're like, "Yeah, they've had to invest, they've had to CAD design it, pay them people, they've had to machine yeah. the mold, install the mold, get the materials that you know, pay the people to run the mold machine." You know, so you add all yeah. of that up. And, and they might it's... only have a limited run of X amount of thousand of these things. Yeah, and they can't and they can't just do yeah. all the I assume they don't just make all the components and then that's it. They have to make them in bits over several years because you've got to Well this is the whole idea with in. the subscription, isn't it? It's almost made to order now. Mm. Oh, know, yeah. They see how it's generating interest. And if say for instance five thousand customers have taken out the subscriptions, they know they've got a run of at least five K. Yeah. So they they can start to to turn a little bit of profit, but all in all, I think some of them would be lucky if they break even. Not yeah, all I mean, the artworks are successful, are they? I mean, the one thing the one thing that frustrates me a little bit is, is not when people say they can't afford like something in this hobby, um, because you can't be in this hobby and not understand it's an expensive hobby. It's it's a luxury. Yeah middle class hobby that's the whole point Absolutely. of it uh, and it's one thing to say uh, you know 
I can't afford that and I'm sad because I can't afford it and that's you know that's that we all suffer that but yeah. it's the people that say I hate that because I can't afford it yeah that's like know. that's like saying I hate Ferrari because I can't afford anything more expensive than my Ford Fiesta oh yeah you always get a little bit of field envy don't you? yeah and it's like that's it's it's not very enlightened way to be it, it's I've always said if someone goes out and buys say Dora yeah prime example super expensive kit right mm -hmm. now not everyone can afford it but if someone can good luck to them yeah at the end of the day why should i hate on them just because they've got enough money to go out and buy it it's like it's some it's almost like some people uh get angry with manufacturers because they price things out of their range and it's like well you know you're gonna have things in any in anything in life there's gonna be things yeah. you can afford and things you can't you know there's kits out there i'd love to buy it they're out of my budget it's yeah. as simple as that you know you know my situation and yeah you know so you do take it on the chin yeah it's like you know i don't hate expensive watches because i can't afford one no it's, it's it's kind of i don't know there's some irrationality sometimes people that that knock stuff because it's out of their price range there's no there's no shame in not being able to afford something uh dad's in <laughs> says i'm shouting at the top of my voice <laughs> oh bless you uh condolences mike is everything okay mate you know yeah take care buddy uh but yeah i never met bob but kind of feel i know him yeah so uh hopefully everything's all right dad yeah big hugs uh, it still doesn't let you off the hook though for cheating on your motorbike just to, <laughs> you know for the record oh what's Engines this now what's this yeah what's well, this now well i didn't want to throw dad under the bus because you didn't you know, want to throw dad under the bus no but i'm gonna um absolutely in the hang out with him earlier and conveniently he's engine for his motorbike that painted itself oh yeah has now mysteriously only gone and mounted itself in the frame in all the correct points with glue how co coincidence how did that that's a miracle it's a christmas miracle it is how did that happen it's a christmas miracle but he didn't cheat why is dad shouting at the top of his voice anyway i don't know is it to get me to do something because they're saying am i going to do anything oh is he <laughs> uh, johnny says if you can think about it you can afford most things you just have to budget for it yeah yeah, yeah there are things you know some people are a really tiny budget and you, you you're never going there's no shame in, in not being able to afford something we're all in that position oh absolutely but, but it's 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 naive not to realize that this is an expensive luxury hobby yes um, and there's a certain degree of i don't know in in some of the younger generations today there's a certain degree of self-entitlement yeah or entitlement to things and that's fine but not in a situation where it's a luxury no um it's frustrating when you can't afford something but it's not yeah but it's, it's part not, of life as well yeah, yeah it's not it's not it makes you appreciate when you do or are able to afford something it gives you a sense of appreciation of the value of that item doesn't it? oh yeah it gives you something to work towards absolutely so uh, yeah. right where's my knife i forgot where there it is I spent a uh, tremendous amount of money and almost 1,000 hours of work building a functional full-sized all-metal R2-D2 and it's been by far the best money I've ever spent. Oh, exactly. wow. Was that, was that a part work, was it? No, I think it was he just built it himself. Oh, there, wow. there is actually an R2 Builders Club. Ah, uh, Scaly so said, done CPR for half an hour. They've taken it to hospital now. Oh, I thought he had passed, mate. I do apologise, Dad. I thought you said he had passed. Ooh. Oh. Oh, Wow. Well, fingers oh, crossed then. Fing fingers are crossed, mate. Yeah. Really are, mate. I do. I do apologise, Dad. I thought you uh, had said that he had died, mate, as you walked out the uh, man cave. My bad, mate. Apologies. Well, it's in a way, it's good news. Absolutely, it's yep. brilliant news. You know, fingers crossed for it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm being told off for not doing anything, so I'm shutting up and doing things now. Uh, Sarah Jane's <laughs> saying, whilst Fox has been waffling, two hours of chat's been missed. Yeah, we try to read out as much of it as we can, Sarah Jane, but obviously we are we are trying to build as well, my love. So apologies if we do miss anything, but 
by all means type it in caps or bung the super chat in folks um, yep. to get our attention we don't deliberately ignore chat it's just yeah, we are also trying to build as well um Sarah you've got a bit James, quiet there carl are you facing away from the microphone oh uh, yes yeah, sorry there mate. You go. I'm, I'm a man of a certain age trying to read what's on my um, thing at the back there, mate. So <laughs> I have Bless. to lean right forward. Is that okay? Can't you put it? Can you not put that somewhere else? Then again, you can't see it if you put it somewhere else, can you? Oh, uh, no, I can't put it anywhere else, mate. Otherwise, I can't <sighs> see it, can I? It's no. a bit like saying put yours somewhere else. It's, it's in a set place, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, let's see whether uh, we can do this. It's only because I've got the webcam mounted to me mic, so I there need to go. mount the webcam somewhere else. But Steady now. Yeah. What you do in your personal time. Yeah. See, that's a bit too close now, isn't it? Ice Queen says to me, concentrate, Vox. You don't want to sand off bits that you shouldn't. Absolutely. Thankfully, you can't. You don't really risk that with Warhammer, though. It's all fairly obvious. Yeah, hopefully that's a bit better. Yeah. Uh, where was I? Uh, Sarah Jane saying JC Bricks and Builds was very upset and unlucky. Still be breathing, actually, she says. And she has been in contact with me through the week. Yes, we've been chatting during the week, Sarah Jane, didn't we, love? Um, I sorted out that with Amazon because uh, Sarah Jane won't mind me saying I, I did send her up a bottle of Malibu, but she's Ooh. currently currently with uh, staying with someone at the moment and uh yeah but let me know when you're back sarah jane and we'll we'll sort that out because i want to give you a little treat love yeah that was very supportive to me yeah i take it i take it uh sarah jane that you can have a little tipple again now if you're waiting for if you're not waiting for the op uh yeah i think she is still waiting she's like me fox she's waiting on a phone call to go straight in so all ah, right you know it's pardon me it's one of those you know i have a go bag packed ready to go you know <laughs> strangely enough strangely enough that's what a go bag is mate well but it's come. funny how many people don't have a go bag i mean it no nope. i had this chat in my hangout a couple of weeks back um i've always kept a go bag uh in there is you know several days worth of clobber and the missus is the same because you never know you know, there could be some kind of tragedy, disaster, or, or where you need to go and evacuate. I've you know to, what I mean? I've got to so. be honest, I've always considered go bags a very... I didn't even know what they were until I started listening to, like, the Tested podcast. I didn't know... Yeah. I've always considered them very Californian, very no. American, but but then again, I've never been through anything where I'd, I'd really need to... Well, you think about it, you know. Say, for instance, you know, there's a fire yeah. at your property. And you, you know, you need to jump out the window or, or however you're going to get yourself out. He's disappeared. By having a go bag, at least if you do end up in that situation, you've got change, change a clobber. You've oh, got, yeah. you know, a week's worth of clothing, that sort of thing. So, you know, a lot of people got flooded, didn't they, a few years back? Yeah. You know, so for me, a go bag's quite quite important you know, i think for me it's just days. living in living in bland town where nothing ever happens i think i probably never thought about having one never say never mate one. you no, never no. know because no, no. it's one of them minute if you had to get out in an emergency you could just grab it boom off you go do your thing but you've got something of your own you can have a change of clothes you know it's just yeah see now now i've said that what i'll actually find out is that i'm actually living over the only active volcano in the entire british <laughs> yeah it's something we've always done, mate. And it's funny, Sue was saying about it. She said, well, that's a good idea. I said, well, you never know, do you? I mean, I suppose I suppose, in, in your, sort of your situation where you've got various, you know, medical reasons to suddenly move. Yes. It's probably more of a natural thing for you to... It, it, it to, to is, do. yeah, because you it's know, I mean, sense thing. majority of the time I've gone in for surgery, you know, they phone you up and go, righty oh, can you yeah. be within the next two hours? And you just yeah. go, yeah, on me way because you've got so to go more, back ready haven't you it's yeah it's more of a logical sort of natural state for um, me, but for yeah me you know if yeah. i have a bad relapse and have to spend a bit of time away from home in the hospital i don't forget you know i, I i've sectioned myself in my adult life a few times because of mm -hmm. the demons yeah. and for that reason alone you know you you <laughs> you've got to be prepared haven't you yeah exactly you know if i'm not myself me missus can pick that up 
they come and get you and off you go and do your thing and then you know you've got something of you with you if that makes sense yeah although i'd um, like to th i'd like to think in some small way that you know us lot and dad and everybody has kind of helped stave off the black dog for you for a while oh yes a little bit yes not yes. completely but a little bit no i i had my little ups and downs but not to the extent i did before i started doing yang outs yeah no so i've not had to um how can we say stay away from home for a while yeah since that and i can't thank anyone or everyone enough for that because uh, it helps yeah it's just it's yeah it's just it's just stimulation and activity isn't it of course it's, it is i mean we all well i say we all not everybody does but you know you'd be surprised how many people in this hobby have a have you know a black dog as it were yes and <laughs> most of them will know what i mean when i say black dog um yeah. but you know it's something a lot of us struggle with and well it's to have to have to be sat by yourself yes is is the worst thing you can do because you just stew on things whereas obviously it's not it's not going to stop anything but it helps no. reduce the no the, i don't like my own company so when i'm not doing hangouts and i'm I, alone on my own so to speak especially if h is out you know and i'm having a bit of a i can't bear to be on my own yeah and i often refer to this as my window to the world and people that are battling mental health will know that because when you're alone or you're thinking you're alone you have time to think and that's the worst thing i can do mm -hmm. because i overthink things you know me well enough to know oh, yeah. that you know but so yeah it's I find talking about it is not only a therapy for me, but if one person watching this or or anything where I've spoken about it before, if it gives them that incentive to ring someone like mind, you know, and get yeah. some help. As far as I'm concerned, job done. Job done because you've helped someone begin to start that journey of coming back. And yeah. you know, I had a decade of it where I was really struggling with it and I had three or four attempts to, how can I say, meet my maker. I'm not proud yeah. of it, but I'm not ashamed of it either. No. Well, it's it's um, not anything that you should be ashamed of. It's not like... No. You know, it's, it's just not, at it's that not... time I didn't see any alternative. And no. a lot of folks all immediately say, oh, what about the wife and the kids? And I love them dearly. But at that time, you're in such a rut. You're not thinking straight anyway. Yeah. And it's because I, I mean, I, I'm worth more dead than I am alive because of mm. all the insurances I've taken out and, and things, and you know the mortgage will get paid and and all of that. Yeah. And so, in my mindset, when you feel that you're either struggling financially, and especially when I'm medically retired, you do feel you're on the scrap heap. Yeah, you kind of just feel put out to pasture. Absolutely. Like, oh. And suddenly you feel a bit worthless, a bit this, a bit that, and things ain't going your way. And then someone in the community might pee you off because they've been a knob. And you know what I mean? And it all just escalates, doesn't it? Yeah. And you then don't see any way out of that. You overthink it. And you think, well, at least I know they'll be financially secure. So what is the point? And mm. suddenly you're <laughs> you're down there yeah um whereas this now helps me stop that because people that hang out with me spot it in me body language or me demeanor they know when i'm not right yeah and uh, uh, um, it to helps be, to be brutally honest as well um the worst one of the worst things at least for me anyway one of the worst things um when you when you're in that kind of situation is for somebody to do is to try and give you advice when they don't actually understand what they're talking about yes you know, yeah when you you know it's like you know me and you might be having a conversation and we can talk about this and we can we understand what we're talking about but then yes. you get somebody who doesn't and they might say ah oh, you're just feeling a bit sad it'll pass just think about happy things you're yeah like, you don't you don't understand <laughs> yeah anyway. it's that get a grip of yourself what's the matter with you pillow? yeah no, you know and it's, it's like yeah it is a strange one it really is um a lot of people think it's just being sad it's like no 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 <laughs> no it's 
but luckily you know I've, i'm not in that situation because i've got enough close friends in the community that i have as a core group of friends that know me well enough and they know yeah. if i'm not myself yeah. and they'll tell me they'll brutally tell me cole you're not yourself mate have you spoke with ellen you know what i mean and uh, yeah because yeah. and she spots it she knows yeah but yeah sorry if i'm getting deep but you know no, nice again talking deep. about it you know there might be someone watching this that goes i feel a bit like that mm. or if that probably then the... makes them go to their gp and say i'm feeling a bit down well they're already making progress aren't they? yeah I mean, there's probably an entire conversation in chat that we're ignoring that's probably actually discussing just that, but it's, it's usually the way. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I Colin... was saying that Dad has the bike. I've heard you've nearly finished it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The miracle of the self-assembling motorbike. Motorbike? What the hell's a motorbike? Yeah, Gemma's saying there, Colin, I know that feeling. On a Saturday, I'm on alone. And even though Chris messages me, I hate it. My own company doesn't suit me. No, I, I hate being a, being on my own because I have to be stimulated. Yeah. It may sound strange. It's either a movie, television, a book, or this hobby, or interacting with Fox, Dad, and laughing and interacting. The mm. minute I switch this webcam off, I feel suddenly very terribly alone. I mean, um, I, mean... I hate that. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit lucky in that I I actually enjoy my own company. Yeah. In in a lot of cases, I enjoy my own company more than I enjoy the company of others sometimes. But yeah. Um, that is of course when I know there's someone else around. Or yes. If you know, if I was literally on my own, well, I've never really have been, so I don't know. But you know, if yeah. I if I lived in this house, Mama Fox wasn't here. Yeah, I don't know. If I was. If I was financially secure, I'd probably be more than happy with my own company. If I'm not financially secure, that might be more stressful. Yeah. But I don't know. I've never had to do that. But I, no. I do enjoy my own company, so I've got that little advantage. Yeah, I mean, you know, my situation, I'm a prisoner in my body because, it, you know, it's failing me, basically, my mobility. Uh, you then become a prisoner in your own home because you become housebound, and worst of all, you become a prisoner in your own mind. Did you basically get a Friday night Dagon and Body? Friday yeah. afternoon Friday afternoon Dagon and Body? Yeah, but some of it is my own fault as well, mate. Yeah. You know, I, I'm an ex-motorcyclist, as you know. I, I had a very, very bad accident where I was hit by a drunk driver, yeah. and it damaged my spine and my pelvis quite badly. Um, so... When I I got MS, they seemed to think it was beginning to show itself in my mid to late twenties. Yeah, but it's like anything because I already had issues with my spine. Being it's a central nervous disease anyway, and things were weak in that area. It it run ravage. You know, it, it yeah, did its thing, and it could do I went undiagnosed for a long time, and I had a head injury at the workshop. I had a windy gun fire off the arrows and straight into my face. So it Oof. did a bit of damage on the left side of my face and damaged my cheek, bone, roof of my mouth. You know, caused a quite a, an extensive facial injury. Yeah, Colin used to speak with a posh Eton accent until the accident. <laughs> He's like, hello, hello, smack. What? Oh, yeah. So all of that. So obviously because that happened, I had to have quite deep brain scans done. Did they find and, any? Yeah, they did, but that's when they found the uh, cauliflower, you know, the uh, deposits in your brain. Yeah. Got a classic with MS, so it was like, how long have you had MS, mate? Pardon? What? You know, and then it was, we got lesions in the brain, mate, that are classic MS-style lesions. And that was it, you know, You're it like, started a, an interesting journey, but... I wouldn't change it. It makes me me. It's a part of me, and I'm a better person for it. And this is where my getting back to my point with the mental health comes in. Those people that know me really intimately and well know that the last thing I want in life is to upset anyone mm. because I oh, take gotcha. it really badly. If I, if I, say, for instance, in the hangout, if, say a fox was in or Sai was in or Sue or Paul... And I say something that offends someone. 
I'll hold my hands up straight away. And it's the first thing I did when I started the patron hangouts. I said to people, you know, I can be a little bit faultless with things I say. Mm. Now, if I offend anyone, please tell me. I'll understand. I'm a grown man. I'm a big boy. Yep. But I would hate to feel that I've said or behaved in a way that's offended someone. Because you I struggle you with that. for day, though, won't you, if you, do, if you do that? Well, you know me well enough. I'm terrible. Oh, yeah. That bothers like me. I will, yeah, I will brood on it. I'm like, oh, what a, a bad person I am. And, and it's happened quite a lot. You know, I've had it recently with more than one person that, you know, they've, they've obviously put two and two together and come up with five. And because I haven't had a, an opportunity to explain myself or, or say, well, actually, that's what I meant. They've, mm. I'm guilty as charged in their opinion yeah and they're entitled to that so i'm not gonna say they're not people are entitled to their opinion if they think i'm a knob that's their opinion good luck to them yeah but at least let me sort of justify and, and say well, actually no you're wrong there that's not what i was about because you know me i laugh and i joke but the last thing i would do is deliberately insult someone exactly talking of which are you still in trouble with uh, are you and dad still in trouble for the great the great comment banning of Sunday? Um, I'm not in trouble because it was dad that did it. I know, but I thought you might have just got into trouble by, by No, proxy. no, I'm I was beginning to be guilty by association, but I think I was cleared of any involvement because dad is just guilty. <laughs> Dad's just a crim. <laughs> he's a repeat offender. It's he's not the crim. first time that he's timed Sue out. <laughs> and yeah, I, yeah he's under the bus mate um, oh yeah you know i think the sue was very justified in feeling very hurt and he should hold his head in shape. you're not just throwing him under the bus you're 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 surrounding the bus with bricks and planks so he can't get out absolutely because i know deep down he'd do the same to me exactly Damn um, we wouldn't have that any other way we we love mike for the person he is yep but we do throw him under the bus at any given opportunity because we can. Somebody's got to be under that bus. Yeah. And if it ain't me, I'm happy. If there was not <laughs> supposed to be somebody under the bus, the bus wouldn't have an under. <laughs> do you see what I did there? Do you see what I, mean? I did. I am yeah. impressed with that. Yeah. All right, that's going to go on there. I'm just a like of that. Yeah, so it, it when, when I, it can be frustrating when, you know, you're going through a bad time and people are trying to be helpful, but they they sadly don't really know what they're talking about and it kind of ends up doing less good than well yeah i mean good. it bothers me i mean especially the intentions the they thing think that annoys helping, me about not. it is when it's people that know you struggle with your demons and they still go and do it to you yeah and you're like no that's what hurts me the most yeah because i'm like really yeah um people that should know better yeah but that's that's just how it is you know but i'm not everyone's cup of tea but at least you know if i do pee someone off at least give me the opportunity to take it on the chin by all means have a go at me I'll understand. i don't know how you could not be someone's cup of tea that sounds like nonsense to me no but you know what i'm like that's I'm like not. It's, that's like not liking a big dumb puppy. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, there's, I'm no, not... there's no way you can't you can't not like. There's no way. Well, there's no way you can not like a big dumb dog. You know, I'm not racist. I'm not sexist. I'm not homophobic. I am me. I, you know, but you're an idiot. But so are yeah, you, you know, I goof around. You know, but as I've said many times, I can pay someone a compliment, and it sounds like I'm insulting them. You know what I mean? And. I can but, order I can order a menu at a restaurant and the chef will think I'm trying to kill him. Yeah, basically that's why he's not given H a compliment for 30 odd years because every time he tries he ends up getting slapped. Well, you yeah. Just, you just give, give it up, haven't you? You know better now. You know, she once said to me, which one of these makes me bum look big? And I said, both of them. Now, <laughs> I thought that was trying to be helpful, but apparently the, that's not the answer. Now, to be fair, she was putting you in a corner. Yeah, but... I, I don't deliberately try to upset people, but sometimes I do. And I'll, I'll hold my hands up and go, yeah, I was a knob. But, <laughs> you know, and you offer an apology, don't you? That's what I do. You know, I'm not ashamed or <coughs> oh, too bigoted or whatever to, to not go, yeah, I was a dick there. But 
if someone is snowflaking, uh, well, sorry, that's just their own their own issue then, isn't it? Because yeah. they're using me to justify why they're being a bit silly, and that annoys me because I'm then portrayed as the bad guy. Yeah, no, that's that's nonsense. And we all know how how can we say? It? Excuse me, we all know our shit sticks in the community, don't we? Yeah, exactly. you know. And that, that's what winds me up the most, and that's what brings me down about the community, mate. Thankfully, it's very rare, though. It's very, it is quite Absolutely. Rare. I mean, compared There's more to, than bad. I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ, look at the gaming community, and then don't, then you'll never feel bad about the... the oh, really? Is it like it there? So well, gaming community is like, it's, it, a, yeah. it's a toxic cesspit, constantly. It's just... Really? Yeah, video game community is awful. Wow, that surprises me. Yeah, it's just a horrible, horrible, toxic wasteland. D five, D seven. It's just, just no, it. don't forget. A lot of the gaming community is like young people and idiots. Oh, oh, there's, a high percentage, well, there's a high people, high percentage of young people and competitive idiots. So mm. it's never going to end well. What a shame. Not completely, but there are just. It does seem to have a high proportion of knobbers. Let's say D five and D seven is what I want. Because I always have this philosophy that we're on this little build ball of rock for a very, very short time. Mm. And I can't be serious, I'm yeah. afraid. Because, and again, not for the violins, but when you've been dealt a bit of a, a shitty hand, let's be honest, yeah, health-wise and, and, and all of that, you've got to laugh at it. You know, when I got my, <laughs> when I got my type 2 diabetes diagnosis, I'm like, anything else you want to give me? You, you, uh, you were like, really? Really? Yeah, you know, do you want to give me polio as well? You know, I mean, I'm open to offers. They that's like no, that's like but... spilling your tea after you've just cleaned up the breakfast that you dropped on the yeah, carpet. Yeah, you know, well, you've got type 2 diabetes. I said, yeah, no worries. And the reason you're in complete constant pain as well is because you've got fibromyalgia as well. Yeah. And I'm like, so I've now got MS, fibromyalgia, and type 2 diabetes. I said, you do realise my middle name is Lucky. It's like, at, <laughs> at what point do you get Ebola and Setsy virus, you know? Yeah, and then people say, you're always goofing around, take things seriously. Well, I gave up that when, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's a certain point at which you're like, right, fine. There's a certain point where you just go, do you know something? Yeah, you do. You look up and you think, where is that bolt of lightning that's going to strike me? But... You, well, You've you got just, to you, laugh at it. All you can do is remember that the house always wins. Yes. You know, Gemma will know this, and I'm not going to go into details, Gem. But, you know, Gemma has got issues, should we say. Sarah Jane has got There's issues. There's no way to talk about Chris. Um, and, you know, it's not just me that's got these issues, but we all perhaps have a yeah. very similar mindset of, oh, well... <laughs> There's you can either sit you can and moan do, but... about it, or you can just have a laugh and mock yourself, and that's how I choose to do it. I'm the same. I'm the same. You just you don't ignore like the that. stuff. You just think, well, I can't do anything to change it. So that's just along with the punches. It is what it is, mate. It's like it's like I said. I think uh, a few weeks ago on a stream, I, I realised this when I was like at secondary school, and you know, there's one day when I was there and I was waiting outside the headmaster's office to get a bollocking for some reason something i'd done <laughs> yeah and normally i'd be like panicking and stressing and i suddenly thought you know what it doesn't matter what i think and feel and panic about yeah nothing is going to change the fact that i'm going to go in there and get get my ass kicked absolutely I, I, nothing i can do can change it so why don't i just stop stressing yes stop worrying and just think okay it's going to happen so let's just use this time stuff oh, here yeah to think about other things and then i kind of it changed me then that was the realization just a little bit so that i still get stressed and panicked about things mm. but i kind of put things in perspective and i don't i don't worry about everything all the time yeah if there's something i if there's something i can do something to change it if i can have an influence on an outcome then i'll yes. panic and i'll stress and I'll, I'll i'll try and look at my options yeah but if i if i know or if i think that there's nothing i can do to change the outcome i just go okay let's just see what happens Absolutely. Because it's, it's just a waste of your own time and, and energy and emotion. I get panicky if I'm in the town centre, mate. As big and ugly as I am, you know, if I'm suddenly just sort of there on my own, especially if H is nipped in to a shop just to quickly grab something, I'm there yeah. and I'm like, I don't like this. 
I really don't like this at all because mm-hmm. I've spent that long now indoors because obviously I've been housebound before COVID hit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you do, you become institutionalised. Yeah. It's very, very bizarre. Yeah. You'll know that when I say to you, all right, Fox, <laughs> how often do you get cabin fever? Not very often. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Not oh, well, move, moving on then, been to that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> But you do. You do. No, I, I used to. Yeah. But you I think feel in the, quite in, confined, don't you? Yeah, I don't know what it is, but there's a few things in my life happened over the last 10 years yeah. that... Uh, I'm not going to go into any details, but some <clears> things <throat> happened in my life over the last 10 years that kind of changed me as a person. Yeah, yeah. Kind of bro- some, some of them broke me a little bit, mm-hmm. and some of them did some damage, and some of them were just like, you know, not bad things, but just things that changed me, but... You know, some things happen that did some damage and changed the way I see things. And yeah, you know, before that point, I would have been like, yeah, I used to get cabin fever when I was sat, sat around. But now it's like, you know what? I prefer my own company. I don't need the company of others. And, I, I, yeah. and this, this obviously excludes the people that I choose to spend time with, like, you know, yourself and the people yeah. I hang out with yeah. online and people watching and stuff. But in terms of the general human population, I kind of don't need them now. Yeah, I've in a lot of ways, very I'm like, socially I'm, awkward, mate. Yeah, I mean, I had that, but now I'm just like socially not interested. I think it's, yeah. it's really weird. So, aside from people I actually choose to to associate with, most people, he's still with us. Oh me? Yeah. yeah. You went. You went. Oh, hello, I can see. Oh, I can see a live bomber, Jan, Dakajet, bomber, Dom, Jackajot. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I've just got that geezer to look for, and I the dude with the flying scarf. So, oh yeah, the one with the 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 Russ Abbott pilot scarf. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yes. So, uh, JC Briggs and Bill says the gaming community is mainly filled with keyboard warriors and young kids playing 18 plus games, calling the older ones specific names for being paired in teams with them. Also, really? it's full of it's full of racist, misogynistic teenagers who don't really understand how the world works. See, I find that bizarre. This is Ra- the online race, racist keep in mind this, teenagers. Keep in mind, this is the online gaming community, like yeah. competitive, like Call of Duty and all that kind of stuff. Where, yeah. and yeah, there's a lot of real nasty racism, sexism, homophobia, all kinds of like nasty stuff goes down. And that's why I don't play online games because ninety nine percent of the people on there are just knobs. See, I find uh, that quite sad because. When you say racist, misogynist teenagers, I'm like, really? Have we learned nothing? Oh, it's no, because... it's because t- it, 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 the ones that are like that is because they're too stupid and they haven't learned anything. Yeah, they've but not, I they've just not lived find anything it odd yet. In this day and age, that that would still be a thing. I just, I can't compute it, mate. No, I don't it's know how no. anyone can be racist or, or homophobic or anything like that, especially nowadays. A lack of education. It's a, it's a it's a education and social interaction issue. Yeah. If you if your if your peers are like that, it just it seeds down to a lot of people. If there's no positive reinforcement away from that, you're just going to assume oh, it's the norm. Just find plus, it strange and quite sad, really. Plus, there's a lot of really really dumb, stupid people out there. Yeah. This again, this is why I, I've kind of shut myself away from most of the human race for the last ten years. I'm like, I'm yeah, happy, thank you. Well, I mean, I I've always had a live and let live philosophy, you know what I mean? And oh me too. I don't care. You know, I used to say this to both my sons, I don't care whether you bring home Sheila or Steve. As long as you're happy. You know, and, and that's how I see it. Whereas other people go, Oh no, and I'm like, Really? Yeah, great. I mean, my, I just my find pers- it strange and quite, quite sad almost, you know. Because I mean, my my personal opinion on most things is I don't care, but I don't mean yeah. like I don't care like it's unimportant. I mean, I don't care like I don't care what colour someone is, what their sexuality is, what their beliefs are. I I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. All I care about is are they a good person and can I get on with them? Absolutely, that's it. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't care. Know. I can remember, you know, I I know gay people, I know straight people, I know all kinds of bloody people, you know what I mean? Um, You know, someone very close to me when they came out, I'll do it that way, 
Um, I said, well, yeah, like I didn't know. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's why do you feel thing. the need to tell me? Because when I go into a room, I, I don't have the urge to say, oh, hello, I'm Colin. And by the way, I'm an heterosexual male because I like women. Yeah. So why should it be a thing? I just don't get it. Yeah, it should just be something that doesn't even need to be talked about. Exactly. I'm like, yeah, all right. Thanks for letting me know what I'm supposed to do. Say, well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's it. You know, I know straight people, gay people, bisexual people. You know, it's like, yeah, Free for a pound. Free for a pound. You Free know, for a pound. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I've, I've always had this opinion that I just, I don't care what no, someone is in terms of race, sex, creed. I, it doesn't make any difference to the person that I'm actually talking to. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's like, if someone is not a complete moron, yeah, then I can probably find some common ground and, and get on with them. Absolutely. You know, I'm, uh, it doesn't really matter to me what... Yeah. what <laughs> was, I just have a really good I mean. uh, uh, black friend. He Sadly, he died. Uh, the big cancer got him... Uh, Hmm. But I can remember he, he was like, you know, he, he was on about being black one day. And I looked at him and I went, you really? I said, at the end, I said, I can't say I've noticed. <laughs> you know, and he's like, dude, he said, you just don't take anything seriously, do you? I said, well, I said, I'm not in a position where I've been a victim of racism. I said, I just find it very sad that you're standing there trying to justify to me the colour of your skin after all the years you've known me. Yeah. I said, I find that so disappointing almost, you know. But And it is. It's the, Yeah, that he, he was in a situation, he'd been put into a situation where yeah. he would see everyone as a potential yeah. threat. And it's like, even his friends, it's like, you know, you don't need yeah. to... You know, he said, I can honestly say, he said, you've never treated me in anything other than a most dignified manner. And I said, well, yeah. why wouldn't I? You're a friend. Wait, hang on. How come this, uh, How come we never get that? We never uh, get well, dignified manner. We just get you're fox. You need to be bullied and cajoled at every opportunity. Oh, That's my know. job. I don't know. You know, but you know deep down you wouldn't have it any other way. You love no, it. No, that's true. Uh, it's all, all I care is it's all attention as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> the way I look at it is it proves to it, it proves to you how much we all trust each other because, like I say, we can all give each other that sort of banter, can't we? Yeah. You know, there's names and things we can all call each other in hangouts, but if anyone else was to walk up and say that to you... They'd be like, wait, what? I'd be like, hold on a minute. Excuse really? me, what, yeah? Well, you that's what you, you call him. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've earned that right. You haven't. F off. Yeah. You know, it's just how we are. We're all, we all goof around, but we're very particular and loyal to each other. Yeah. I'll tell you what ang angers me, though. Um, and it does frustrate me, is when, and it's kind of by association, this is going to sound really like white tears, but no, you when, carry on, so man. when someone who is, like, racist yes. thinks that it's perfectly acceptable to discuss it because I'm white and they're white and it's like, yeah, we're all... And I'm like... Yeah. And I have to... Some, I, there's been times I've had to turn around to someone and say, not everybody in my family is white. Now shut yeah. up. And they go, yeah. oh, uh, uh, and I'm like, yeah, don't, you know. I sat one day in an hangout with someone. They're well known. Um, and they was giving me their view on sexuality, should we say. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to guess it was uninformed and, and Neolithic. Yeah, you yeah, know, it was Bernard Manning, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, what? Um, right. And I let, them, I let them carry on and carry on and carry on. And then I dropped, you know, that someone close to me was gay. Yep. And they didn't even stop and think, oh, sorry, mate, if I'd known, I wouldn't. No, they just carried on and I went, right, I'm going to end the conversation. You won't be yep. getting a link again. <laughs> no. no but it, it, it does Even frustrate me. It, it's a sad state of affairs when you know somebody with strong racial prejudices just thinks that just because you know my skin is white that therefore i should also be racist yeah. and bigoted and it's like actually no i'm, no. I'm not a moron and i please no. i'd be grateful if you didn't assume that thank you very much because like i say not everybody in my family is actually white so no no 
you know, I just think it's sad. It's disappointing. That's the word. Disappointing. Yep. You know, and dare I say it, I just feel... I don't know. Part of me feels sorry for the person that's saying it because they are that stupid. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> you know they're, I mean? they're they are like, pretty much morons. Yeah, it's like really. In a way, in a way, I, I kind of, I, I also agree that I do feel sorry sometimes for the for the bigots and the morons because it, it's a lot of it is just the way they were brought up, the way they, the, the culture they grew up in, and that's just the way they've been exposed to the world and the way to see it and they weren't smart enough to see their way out of it and think their way out of it yeah. and it's a shame it is when you see something it's like a waste of a brain oxygen faith isn't it yeah it's, you know they, they never had the the ability to to think themselves out of that situation they just fell in with their peers and their limited annoying beliefs yeah that's sometimes the thing you notice isn't it is peer pressure some yeah. of them you can see that perhaps it's not what they think but because they're hearing other people in their little gaggles yeah. they feel they've got them and all and it, well it's I, like you know if it was if it was you or i we we'd stick there and say actually no this is offensive and you're wrong and i'm not going to listen to this crap but yeah. for some people they just they don't have the smarts to do that they just go okay i did it and once and, uh, so that i could as i ambled off they're like well what's upsetting <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, uh, duh. Yeah, I just, I don't know. We're getting so, all serious and deep, aren't we? Sorry, folks. Yeah, no, I quite like being serious. Okay. But yeah, so to answer your question, I, I used to get cabin fever. Not anymore, no. I, I hate 99% of the human race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people in the chat accepted, of course, because they're all wonderful people. Just do some building, come on. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, I'm the here. voice from the depths. I'm you both. Dad hogs. Bye, Nim. Thank you, mate. Bye, Nim. Who? Uh, Nim off. What? Who's going? I oh, know, I'm saying hi, Nim. Oh, oh said hi, Nim. Nim. I thought you said bye, Nim. No, 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 no. Uh, she put at mod. Uh, Sarah Jane, going back to conversations earlier. Uh, Sarah Jane said it's gone. You had it easy when I got sent to the headmaster's office. He went to teaching college with my dad, so I'd go home and get another round of it. <laughs> well, when I was at primary school, uh, I got pulled up in front of the deputy head because oh, I said a rude word in the playground. I can't remember why. And it wasn't like me to do that. But my mum worked in the library at the school. Ah. Oh. So we had to go up to her and say, this is in the day, like, basically I got the trainer to the arse slap like that as a punishment. And oh, he said, right, yeah. It, you had to go to her and say, can I do the trick? I, I need to punish him. She went, oh, yeah, just smack the crap out of him. There you go. <laughs> yeah, good mum. <laughs> well, well done, mum. Good girl. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I got, <clears throat> I got a dad dog off a of Graham McRobert who doesn't give hugs. Ooh. Oh, even though you cheated on your motorbike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though I cheat, I've just been round the block on it, mate. Of course, a cracker. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, Jamie and the magic bike yeah. that paints itself. <coughs> we need to get dad a dog called Wordsworth now. Oh, yeah. Wordsworth. <laughs> Jamie and the magic bike. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Reynolds said, i got to snap you two out of all this seriousness. Yeah, no worries. Alexa, wet fart. Uh, I think Ice Queen went to bed about an hour ago. Uh, yeah. She did. Right, when well, we totally didn't about notice. What of an hour ago. Yeah, she did, but her Alexa. And mine's <gasps> on. Oh, Sarah Jane says, A friend I was staying at with last two days. Her son does the designs for Warhammer. As you're waffling, you won't see this. No expect warning number four. Oh, brilliant. Ooh. Warning number four. I'm, I'm wondering if that's Darren Latham or somebody else. Mm. Warning number four. Oh. Oh. Stay with his son does the designs for Warhammer. Wow. You need to you need to somehow take advantage of that situation, Sarah Jane. Night James, see you on your stream tomorrow, buddy. JC See you later, James. See you, James. Also, Sarah Jane says she has Jamaican ginger cake. All mine, mine, I tell you. Oh, I like ginger cake. Oh, she wants here's, here's the thing, up. right? I don't like ginger, but I do like a ginger cake, and I do like the ginger you get with sushi. <laughs> But I don't like ginger, oh, yeah. but I do like that ginger. I don't know why. 
Graham McRobert says Freddie's coming out. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, uh, see, there's a man who spends too much time alone. Sarah Jane says, yes, I warned you, warning number four, if you're not, you're not listening at five, you owe me a model kit of my choosing. But I did read out the comment. Nah. Yeah, but she'll still pick on you, because she can. Yeah, I don't know why, but yeah. she does. Yeah. It's because she loves you. She cares. That's why. Nobody else pays me this much attention, you know, but somebody that doesn't like me, she pays me more attention than everybody else. And Jim has just said, cheers, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> you it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bless her up. We like Gemma. Gemma's lovely. Alexa, play Spanish Flea. <laughs> this is how it starts, folks. Oh yeah, yeah. it's nice when I can actually be on a stream and do that rather than type it in chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, JC Brick's going to head off to bed, get up early and meet parents in town. Catch you guys tomorrow or on yeah, Sunday. See you later, James. Thanks for popping. Oh, you've in, done mate. that one already, haven't you? Yeah, I've already done that. Sorry, Hugo Saws is in. Welcome, Hugo. You got nothing to build, Fox. Hugo, look. Oh. I have, Dad. Shut up. <laughs> they're, they're picking on you again, mate. I'm not like you. I've not got like a pre built motorbike ready or anything. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit of loader. Yeah. Zing. I'm reading the chat. I'm being a chat dolly because somebody else isn't. Yeah, that's because I'm building, see. Look at that. Yeah, I wasn't aiming at you, Carl. Well, I'm not getting the bloody chance. You're. Two are yakking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gav's in. Skull modeling chaos. <laughs> clearly didn't turn Alexa off because she just said, Cheers, Fox. <laughs> ah, Hugo Saw said, Hee hee, Dodge. <laughs> uh, You're on it, Dad. <laughs> what was that? What did I miss? What you got to remember with Gemma is, you see, that's how she gets hold of Chris's via Alexa. Alexa. Yeah. Uh, so so that's why she leaves it on. Uh, so be gentle with Gemma. Gentle with Gemma evening today. Yeah. Gentle with Gemma. Five o'clock Fridays. <laughs> Sundays on Channel 3. Uh, mm -hmm. What else am I on this? Muse is in. Scale Model Muse. Welcome, Muse. Hello, Muse. Right, love Hello, you. Muse. That was all sing song there, Dad. It was, wasn't yeah, it? That muse. Paul Dick Van Dyke had bought him. Cool, bloody Mary Oh, bollocks. I'm just... Oh, <laughs> oh flan. Well, you've not dropped that one part that you cut off as through a bit, Bob. Well, I kind of moved my arm and it stuck to my arm and flew off across <laughs> God knows where. Don't, don't, don't hold back, mate. Don't hold it back. It got stuck on my arm and I went like that, and it's just. He's only, he's only oh, cut two pieces off, and he's lost one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I've built that. I've built that so far. No. What, Honestly, that's last, last Friday and tonight. That. <laughs> 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 God damn old people. <coughs> <laughs> uh, right, what am I doing now? Right. Uh, probably going to cut another part off the spray or <laughs> that one. Such ingratitude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll come and take those paints back, you know. <laughs> yeah, please do. Feel free. Give us a knock when of course, you're it does mean driving down the motorway, so maybe not. Yeah, that'll mean you going out, won't it? And, yeah. yeah, there is that. Shut up. It's all right, though, folks. I've got sugar if you come here, but you don't take sugar. Oh, you're just going to put a line of it across the door, and I'll be like, damn it. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll be like making this little hissing noise <laughs> at the oh, door. I don't know. Can you hear me all right? Because Cy Reynolds said, yes, Dad, somebody passed Fox a fire extinguisher. I can smell the burning from here. That must be at the speed that you're building up, Fox. I take it he means from that. You made his arm fall off now. Look at what you did, Dad. That's not me. That Cy said that, not me. Yeah, every, time quick, you, every time you mock me, a space marine loses his arms. <laughs> don't call him speedy for no reason, do we? <laughs> I don't call me speedy for any reason. Uh, Jim has moved the. So thanks for remembering it's her lifeline, but she's moved the iPad just in case. This oh, is 
This is Colin and Fox we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, apologies, Jim. If we're if we yeah. are messing with you, just be you know, just tell us and we'll stop, darling. Because don't want to. Otherwise, we'll just talk louder if you move it further. Away. Yeah, we don't want to. Um, how can we say? Call you any uh, issues? No, don't want to make it hard for you. Now say it like you mean it, Cole. Oh, mate, see, this is what gets back. Let's get what gets me back to earlier. <laughs> I can say something meaning it really nice and it does sound as if I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> I try. First is trying. Very. Very trying. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just seeing if there's anyone that I've not seen in the chat who is in the chat, that's all. Yeah, no, 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 no. Sarah Jane's up to her. See, her, her spice partner's gone now. Her spice partner's gone. To uh, bed. Yes, yes. Old Spice has gone to bed. Wait, yeah. what's the spice partner? I don't. What? what? Uh, Sarah Jane and Sue, the Spice Girls, when they get together, oh, they basically right. gang up on me and Dad and bully us. us basically, yeah. well, don't they do that even when they're not together? Yeah. Do you mean a bit like you guys gang up on me? Yeah, but that's just that's that's duty. Is that <laughs> that's contractual obligation? Yeah, I'm just performing my, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, for the benefit of mankind, is it? Yeah, I'm just doing my job for the community, mate. I see. Gemma is, says, is if that I get fed is? up with you too, she says, I will tell you. Don't don't worry about that. Good Absolutely, on. Gemma. We're only trying to have a laugh with folk, but you know, if we do cross a line. Just tell us, darling. Yeah. We'll understand. Yeah, we'll just blame it on Chris. She, <laughs> Jimmy did actually tell me off earlier on because said Chris has been very good today. So, hooks to Chris. Oh, he's in the good books, is he? Yeah. yeah he put up his uh, first Enterprise video today. Good God, that thing looks massive. Yeah, the one that he says isn't going to take up his entire man cave because he really doesn't want to clean his bench, does he? I, d I, d I don't look... <sighs> I get the because it always looks like because when you see him on the Monday, I'll finish the sentence in a minute. When I when you look at him on the Monday, he's sat there and he's got all the stuff around him, and I know the camera kind of compresses it, but it looks like uh, he's got this little like cocoon around him, and the room's like about ten foot square. Yeah, and it's like where does he get to build all these wonderful big massive things? And yet, what so I'm saying, like you need to, you're going to have to clear some space. That like, no, it'd be fine. Yeah, he's like, yeah, no, that's all right. I'm and he's there, he's there showing like how the saucer section alone just fills up the entire work base. Like, yeah, I can fit it on here, no problem. I'm like, really? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've got no chance of fitting that on my bench, mate. Uh, Gemma says he's only in the good books because he's asleep. Ah. Yeah. Uh, scale modeling chaos is back with food. Got pasta with tomato, pancetta, and red wine sauce covered in cheese, garlic bread, big bar of dairy milk, chocolate, knickknacks, and hula hoops. Oh, nice. Uh, although that was a run on sentence, so it sounds like the pasta and sauce is covered in dairy milk, chocolate, and hula hoops. <laughs> but mm. knickknacks. Oh, knickknacks. Spicy knickknacks. Oh, yes. I used to like the fish and chips, <clears throat> chips crisps. <gasps> Love them. I always thought spicy knickknacks were kind of a northern thing, but I don't know why. Not had them. Not had knickknacks. <gasps> you never had, never had spicy knickknacks. No. Spicy knickknacks. Oh, they're like, they're like, Dad. How do you explain the knickknacks? They're like. Oh. They're like. Yeah. Um, imagine mal. Okay, do you remember those crisps that were like, they were like chips from the chip shop. They were just potato crisps shaped like chips. Yeah. Imagine them, but like malformed, so they're all lumpy, bumpy. Mm -hmm. But they're spicy. Yeah. And they taste like happiness and 1978. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Sarah we... Jane says she's got her first Na NASCAR kit coming. Ooh. Ooh, look forward to seeing that. Plymouth. I don't know why I said Plymouth. Whenever uh, I think of NASCAR, I think of Plymouth Roadrunners. Yeah. There are other NASCAR cars, obviously, but hey. And I'll put your wooden pictures in the gallery um, folder for you, Sarah Jane. So I'll be um, showing them off on the brunch, darling. Panzer currently joined us. Good evening, Panzer. Hey, Panzer. Uh, hello, Panzer, mate. Hope you're doing all right. 
Uh, William Rayborn said, Good night, everyone. I've got to get ready for the movie Mortal Kombat. Oh, good movie. Mortal Mortal see you later, Kombat. William. Thanks for popping in, mate. And Frankie goes to Hollywood. Said I had a bowl of yaki soba noodles. <gasps> yaki soba oh, noodles. Nice. So how many dudes is it? Do I can I use on the Waz bomb? All of them. Yeah, uh, you, need, you need you need one pilot and one gunner. Pilot and a gunner. Yeah, because I'm going to nick another head then if I can. And well, have you decided box. what are you going to have? You need to make sure you get the right. I think there's different gunners for different gunning gunner things though. Yeah. So you might want to just make sure you, you choose which gunner you want. Yeah, that's why I'm going to look at the yellow one and see which gunner I need to keep. Yeah, good girl. That's Same logical learning. thinking. Listening with the words and the ears. And Grim Robert is saying, Hey Colin, all I can say is I had a few low moments after I take, tried to take my own life. But your so and the rest of the guys have helped me with your nutty so and big thanks. Well, this is it, Graham. I mean, for years I was ashamed and disappointed in myself and beat myself up over it. And then I had that epiphany moment where I thought, well, the easiest way for me to continue and, and get over it is to try and help others that maybe haven't asked for support themselves and that's why i'm very open about it because people see the big cuddly gore blimey governor that you are on youtube and that but they don't realize that you're actually masking your own inner turmoil it's robin williams syndrome yeah you know every comedian has his own demons you know and i can play the fool because it hides the fact that inside i'm crying my eyes out so i think i think the phrase is the sad clown yeah, and is it it is, he's like that a lot of the time, you know, but, yeah. It gets us all in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, right. so, geez, Hank Marvin, apparently, can you play us a tune then? Um, oh, mate, yeah. She's, yeah, gonna, she, she's doing ba -da -ba -da. Ba -da -ba -da. Gonna do a bacon butties. Panzer oh. on his um he's on his meal break because he's on nights. And Edward Leonard said, Will you shut up about food? I took some of my vape pen for pain, but I can get awfully hungry. LOL. Oh bless ya. Special vape pens that makes you really hungry. Get right. your special vape was here, freight. And I'll never forget going into a petrol station one night, and this is in there. Uh, let's say a part of Manchester that's well known for its its drug culture at the time. Yeah, you, yeah. And, you, uh, I went to a petrol station to fill up, and the guy in front of me, there's this guy in front of me, and he's like, he's about nine foot tall, and he says to the guy in the counter, he says, "Yeah, can I get uh, can I get five packs of the green Rizzler? Uh, can I get four packs of the red Rizzler? And can I have like?" 20 Kit Kats, please. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, I know what you're doing. I know what your evening's yeah. plan is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. But the best bit was the guy went, yeah, the Kit Kats are behind you over there, mate, on the shelf that you can get them yourself. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, sorry. I was like, wow, you started already, yeah. have you? Yeah, it's super duper extra king size Rizzlers. It's like, yeah, we know what you're yep. going to be doing. Yeah. We know what you're doing. <laughs> But he was like this nine foot tall guy and he had the softest voice you can imagine. He was like, hi. He was obviously like a giant soft bear type. I've stuck a head on. Oh, you're Very good. Smart. He looks like he's got a tiny, tiny head. Nick that. Hugo Soros said, see you tomorrow. I'm going to rest, folks. Yeah, see, see you later, Hugo. Hugo. Thanks a lot, mate, for popping yeah, in. stopping by. <laughs> Edward says, no, he wants an effing Kit Kat. <laughs> Oops. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He's not helping you, is he, Edward? That was a KFC burp, that was. Oh. <laughs> Somebody got a police radio? Uh, no, I just got a message now. All oh, right. I think all right, mate. Uh, yeah, you passed away. 
Oh. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Uh, we've done what we could. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Jane saying I had a beautifully cooked salmon on the barbecue the other day. Only oh, nice. chicken in. Air Twickers. Yeah, if you need time, mate, you do what you need to do, Dad. Yeah. No, yeah, if you need to go there, then no, mate. It's the neighbour from two doors away, and he, um, yeah. his wife came running down and knocked on the window in this room. And when I went out, that was why I had to leap out quick, Col. Yeah, yeah, and uh, she said Bob's collapsed. So I went up and I was just doing, um, I just he was on the floor anyway, so I was doing CPR on him until the uh paramedics got there. Yeah. I stood, I stood back and they went, No, carry on. I went, oh, god, right, okay, just while they got all the gear all set up. And they put, I'd never seen this machine before, but it's um, oh god, I've forgotten the name of it now. But it's like a brace that goes around the chest, yeah. and then yeah. it, you push a button, then it pumps down on the chest. Oh, it's like a like the like a like an air pressure thing like that. Oh, almost like a it, like, like an iron lung yeah. type thing, but it does the CPR. It's, yeah, it's doing like CPR for you, but it's doing it a lot harder than I could have done it. Wow. But um, yeah, and then they put the adrenaline in and everything else as they do, and then they said, right, we're going to get them through to the hospital now, so. That was their sons just messaged me. That's what that was. But yeah, mm. he's a good old soul. He's good, mate. But there you go. He hadn't been well for a while, Dad, has he? No, no, he's not been. Bless his heart. You know, but yeah. But I'll be there for him when they need anything. I'll be there to help. I know what it's like. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> You'll look out for him. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Thanks, Lynn, for your message there. So. Yeah, you know, because, you know, I've been in hangouts with you long enough and I heard you talk about the fellow, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's like you get to know them, don't you? Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, Pans are saying it's, he's had beef stew with mashed potatoes, coffee, milk and three sweeteners. What's that sweetener rubbish? Yeah, just have sugar. If you can have anything, have sugar. I have honey, mate, with H. Wait, hang on. Oh. In me tea. Hang on. Beef stew with mashed potatoes, coffee milk. Why would you have coffee milk and three sweeteners in your, in your stew? Punctuation, people. Punctuation. He's, he's put punctuation in there. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, it, but he says with mashed potatoes, comma, coffee, comma. <laughs> grammar police, grammar police. Just to let yeah. you know, grammar police. <laughs> I like I like to do that. Beef stew with coffee, milk, potatoes, and sweetness. Yeah, have proper sugar. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what. Um, since since I've had the, the the dental issues, and I had to give pretty much give up sugar because I've, I can't find my sanding mat. Is. is that why you had to give up sugar? Because yeah, find pretty much because I didn't put a comma in the right place there. <laughs> you see how it works. So um, yeah, I had to give up sugar, and it's like. It took me a little while, but now I can't actually drink coffee with sugar in it. I used to have like two sugars in my coffee, but now it's like, oh, I can't. It's just, I can't. I just don't drink coffee, mate. That's because you're weird. You need to sort that out. That's not normal. It's not healthy. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It just doesn't agree with me, mate, for some reason. <laughs> Sarah Jane said, Fox wants punching, did he say? What? <laughs> <laughs> She's gold. She's gold. <laughs> Stop projecting your desires. <laughs> just going to mute my mic a minute. My back door's just gone. Okay. Yeah, no worries, please. Yes, considering Sarah Jane doesn't like me, she does seem to give me more attention than everybody she else. She does like you. I know. I'm j I know. Yeah, Sarah Jane's lovely. Yeah, I thought that when, when she first used to come into me chats that I'd upset her. I used to think, oh my god, have I really done something to upset you? And I did. <laughs> I got myself quite, quite worked up, you know. But I love her banter; it keeps me going. Exactly. It's yeah. funny. It's go. funny. We had the saw out on the bane blade, bane blade, oh. on the was bomb. No, it's not a was bomb. It's a Valkyrie. You tit. <laughs> it's got a tit on so it. So that we can do the open canopies. So a little test fit. Yeah, that will work. Oh. Yeah. 
uh, yes, the good the good thing is that um, once you've run a YouTube channel for more than six months, you know when somebody doesn't like you, and you and you yeah. know when somebody's just being silly. It's it's one of those, you know. It gets back to what I said earlier. I never ever set out intentionally to offend anyone, and I'm mortified when people do take offence. But I then never again, try to offend anyone. But then I speak. I, yeah, original. but then again, I can't help the fact if they've taken offence. Is it because they're slightly highly strung? I don't know, but you know, don't hang, don't hang me for it. For crying out. Wait, un how does this apply though? When it's a case of somebody says, "Do not say this," and then you say it, is that an exception to the rule? No, that's just me not paying attention and being a dick and deserve the slap that I get off of Adam for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, please don't say that. It's, it's funny. We we went <laughs> for my, oh God, we we went out to Nando's. This is this is one of those times when taking me out in public really didn't go well. I'm gonna and, I'm gonna guess your lads really have to work on H to get her to get to go out in public with you. Yeah, of course, my boys loved it. Yeah, we're coming. So they have like, to yeah, kind of right. make her forget all the things you've done in the past. Yeah, um, we're sitting there. You know what it's like. You, you sit there and they bring your grub, don't they? Yeah. And it, it really winds me up because, like, with, with MS, sometimes you get what we call the hug. It's like a thing where you go to swallow. Yeah. And your throat gets stuck. It's the MS hug. You can either get it round your chest where you take a breath and you yeah. then can't relax, or you go to swallow something, but your swallow stays down run and it doesn't release. So you're yeah. because you can't clear your throat because it's got stuck. Yeah, you, 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 so you. when I go to a restaurant, you know, I, I chop everything up nice and small and and, 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 and I, I take quite a while to eat my food. So of course, when you put a bit of food in and then someone talks to you, you can't answer them, can you? Because yeah. at risk of getting that happen to you. And we was out at Nando's, and every time I went, the waiter come out, I think, all right. And uh, they're all on, and he's looking at me, I think, all right, mate. And, mm. and he, they've done it once too often. So yeah. he, and and uh, I said to him, look, mate, everything would be all right if every time I stopped, started to eat something, he didn't come up and ask me an effing question. <laughs> yeah. Because it's getting on me tits, basically. And, of course, my missus under the table is giving me a, a bit of a flick on the shin. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I said, you know what it's like, love. I said, it's if true, I get something stuck in me gut, I said, you're going to be picking me up off the deck. I said, it's lovely, mate. Now, F off out of it and let me have me food. <laughs> now, let me just finish it. Of course, Ellen's just looking at me. She, I can't take you nowhere. I went, what? What have I done now? <laughs> <laughs> the sausages, you, you know. Something wrong with this sausage. The ends are too close together. And she went, oh, will you behave? <laughs> So, yeah, it's, I try, but it's funny, isn't it? Little things bug you, don't they, when you're out for a meal, you know what I mean? And then it becomes yeah. a big issue, you know? But when I've ordered it, I like to be left alone to sit and enjoy the dinner with the family and the people that you're with. You know, leave us alone. We're paying our money. We've, you know, we're going to give you a tip. Now, cough out of it and let us eat our grub undisturbed. I'll tell you what, what what weirded me out once was we went to a, there's a, or the, oh, I assume there still is, I haven't been there for a couple of years for obvious reasons, but yeah, there's a, a Brazilian restaurant local to me and they have like a thing where you sit there and they just bring you these enormous swords with meat skewered on them and they, they come every five or ten minutes with a different like first it's chicken then it's sausages then it's steak then it's whatever oh, right, and they yeah. just and they just they just keep bringing you food and you just sit there and this man this man turns up with a six foot long sword literally a sword with like Ooh. with like chickens on it yeah <laughs> just, i'll have one of them please then i guess yeah and uh, and in, in my mind the idea of it sitting there and being brought meat every five minutes my brain was like bloody do it now go there now go absolutely but i've got to tell you after about half an hour you're just sitting there going kill me just yeah just, please don't come, always coming back oh god he's got like half a cow on his sword <laughs> yeah do you know and the ones that used to annoy me when you used to go to spain i don't know whether folks that have been to spain will remember this but it was a thing in the 80s the old waiter would come up when he grab you pull your head back and pour this vino down your gob 
Oh, really? That would be salt, really, wouldn't it, nowadays? Yeah, you know, it was this weird jar with a big tit on the front of it. <laughs> and, uh, he would just grab hold of you and give it the beans. Now, I ain't being funny, but when someone does that to you, my instinctive reaction is to spin round and give them a slap. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to guess who it happened to, isn't you? <laughs> Where I ended yeah. up for the night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Spaniards, they don't mess about when they arrest you. They give no. you a bit of a shoe in. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, they don't, mess about when they, drag you, they don't mess about when they drag you off to hospital either. No. I, was in I was in Tenerife and I collapsed. Oh, right, uh, yeah. It may have been connected to the fact I've been drinking vodka Red Bulls all night and I was absolutely battered. Uh, that, yeah, that could be something to do with it then, Mike. But it, the, the problem was that uh, I've been drinking the vodka Red Bulls, which means the vodka was doping me out, but the Red Bull was kicking me into gear. Oh, and right, my, yeah. And my so brain was like... It could, yeah, so my brain just couldn't figure out what the hell to do. It's like, I, am I down or up? I just, I'm screw yeah. it, and I just, I just collapsed. Um, so the next thing I knew, I was, I was lying on a, 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 a some sort of, I don't know, gurney of some sort. Yeah. Um, with my butt out. And a very, very attractive nurse jamming an enormous <laughs> syringe into my backside with sedatives in. Okay. And yeah. it, I mean, into the butt, not into, I mean, into the cheek of like a big yeah, syringe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to just like zonk me out. And then the next thing I knew, I woke up about 24 hours later in, in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and all I remember is I felt a bit rough. And then there was a very beautiful nurse. And then there was like a thing stabbing me in the arse. And then I was lying yeah. on a sofa with a Spontex thing on my head. Yeah, to it's like, okay, I've just been brutalised, violated, and Christ knows what. Where, what's going on? Also, who am I? Where am I? And how do I get? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have no memory of how I got to the hospital, or or who paid for any of it, or and apparently, uh, a couple of my friends walked into the hospital after I came. They didn't, and they didn't, they didn't know where I was. Yeah. Um, so apparently they said we knew you were, we knew where you were when we came in because we heard like it was quite quiet and then we just heard ah really loud <laughs> and we thought that'll be fox <laughs> yeah yeah and there I was <laughs> lying there with a I don't know English people abroad is quite quite cringeworthy isn't it yeah oh, we, Honestly, we we really shouldn't be allowed out of the UK no. anywhere foreign. Well, it's like, well, they will insist on, like, you, every bar you walked into at that particular point, we did, like, a bit of a bar crawl. Every bar I walked into, you get you get a free schnapps. Oh, right, yeah. With your first drink. And it's like, I was, we were wasted by the end of the night. Yeah. But I'd never, I, for some reason, we were, drinking, we were drinking vodka Red Bull, and it was really messing my system up. Because oh, right, it's, yeah. it's a depressant and a stimulant in the same glass. Yes. And my brain's like, I haven't got a clue what I'm supposed to do right now. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's on the eight. It's funny though, I don't know about you, but as you get older you sit there don't you, when you're abroad and you think and we wonder why people don't like the English. Oh yeah. Well, you know, they, they don't really conduct themselves very well, do they? It's well the, th the thing is, I suppose the difference is we weren't doing the typical English job abroad. We were being quite civilised. We were, yes. you know, we were respectful and everything. It's just we got a bit trolleyed and I collapsed. Yeah. We weren't doing the yobbish Oh, no. we, we, we weren't going to we basically weren't going to places like Linicus and all the English bars yeah we were just going to normal bars yeah let's go to Iron Napa or Magaluf Magaluf <laughs> yeah Iron Napa free for a pen English people in Magaluf God damn it <laughs> that is yeah are you English? no we went yeah. to uh, we went to we went to the south of France once a group of us um and was it south of France? It's a place called Volnay. It's kind of the yeah. south of France. And we went there for a couple of weeks, stayed in a, a gîte, like a little converted barn. And we yeah. just wanted to do the, the countryside thing. We weren't doing all the clubs and bars. It was just hanging out in the countryside. And, you know, you could look out at the Milky Way at night and actually see it, yeah. which was amazing. And um, we travelled around a bit. But we went to this little town. There's a little town called Volnay. I think it's Volnay. And it's it's tiny. It's this little tiny tiny little town. It's yeah. like it's like Rock Ridge from Blazing Saddles. You walk in and there's like three buildings. One of them is the sport bar, which is like a decrepit <laughs> old decrepit old like bar. Yeah. 
in somebody's front room and then next to that is the funeral director that you know the undertaker and it's this like real rural middle of nowhere little town and you walk into this sport bar which really was just like somebody's front room just like an old oldie worldy like bar there was like one bloke behind the counter literally wiping his glasses with a cloth yeah and there was a small group of French people, like French locals, just sat at this one table. And it was really primitive. And it was really rural. It was like 1950s. Uh, and we walked in. And they're all sat there. And they're like, it all goes they're quiet and stuff. So we walk in. And of course, uh, I'm the only French speaker there. I'm the only one that speaks French. So yeah. I'm doing all the talking uh, to the, the barman and stuff. I'm ordering the drinks and stuff. Uh, and there's a couple of guys speak a bit of French. And we, we were staying there for two weeks, so we went into this sport bar a few times. And at first, they just kind of kept quiet and looked at us. After a few days, they kind of started talking to us a little bit. Yeah. And then by the end of the two weeks, we were all the best of mates. Yeah. And they said to us, basically, when you first came in, we just thought, oh, football, British football hooligans. Ah, uh, uh, yes. We're going yeah. to have trouble here. He said, yeah. but the moment you walked in and ordered drinks in French, we thought, oh, uh okay that's not what i expected yeah. and then when you know when you were talking to the barman in french and stuff and then we started to speak to us and we started and then then we thought okay maybe you're not actually hooligans yeah but that's that's how they saw us they thought we're british we're hooligans and we're like no we're actually trying to speak very bad french at you muse is off see you later muse she's got to pop back to work yeah i've always had it abroad where speaking like i do with my accent people do judge you know bald head tattoos go blimey oh yeah he's going to be a, a football hooligan you know you get you get people that judge don't you you know what yeah. i mean because they've had that experience with drunken brits and they and all of that you know so yeah. when they a do get to know you they suddenly relax us. yeah i mean what's it sarah jane saying there she says as i come from watford I understand your language. She says, fuck being a northern pillock. <laughs> she says, I, under, I understand her words. I'm not a northern pillock. I'm a northern monkey. Get it right, girl. Yeah, Lynn says, Colin said, tit. Yeah, I, I, when I used to go and get the baby's bottles, because my eldest boy was born with um, his stomach and bowels on the outside of his body, so he had quite invasive surgeries throughout he's been a baby and a young lad and as he got older so we, we used to have moors or maw moors teats you know sort of yeah. tits you know for the bottle and it was basically an anti-colic thing so i'd go into the chemist and i'd say can i have a pack and i have a packet of tits <laughs> and the woman would look at me and go what I said, packet of tits, you know, boars, boars tits. Me boy was born with pyloric. Oh, tits. I go, yeah, that's what I mean. She went, yeah, all right, mate. <laughs> they got used to me in the end, but yeah. So, Can anybody yeah. really ever be said to get used to you, Colin? Exactly. But no, again, you know, right. Like, you know, if any other women are offended by my faux pas, I do apologise. I don't mean it in that manner. It's just, you know baby's bottle's got a tit on it, isn't it? Because it's, yeah, yeah you know, got a tit on it. Uh, I'm not trying to be um, Bernard Manning or rude to you. Because I'll brood on it otherwise. Yeah, I don't think anybody will, would take that as rude. No, but... It's not rude, it's fester. I oh, know. I mean, that your reaction that night, was it? Oh, well, you got it. Oh, it's got a tit on it, Clark. So you're like, did you guess... I was like, wait, what? Uh, uh, well, it's because, it's, it's cause, you know, at that point, when I was in one of your streams on your channel, I was being on my best behaviour. I like, know, words it didn't last wise. long, did it? No, nah, bollocks to that. Yeah. I mean, these streams, I mean, it's like it's like anything, isn't it? You know, we do a lot of streams, not just for ourselves uh, and with ourselves, but we do them for e-models and we also do them with other people. Uh, perhaps a time of the day in the UK where parents may be in with their kids, and, you know. So we we have to be on our best behaviour, don't we, mate? What and you're saying is very interesting, and I'm listening, but I've just finished a dude. Carry on. Yeah, I'll, mate. I'll <laughs> put you on full screen in a minute, mate. This yeah. is this is worthy of an award. No, but don't be... these Friday streams for both of us are such a relief because if we do drop the odd one out. You know, people know in the context of the show that we're not doing it for shock value. We're just relaxed. 
you know, yeah. and it's probably the, the stream that relaxes us both the most, isn't it? Is this well, I, I, I mean, you know, obviously people won't know this because they weren't involved in the conversation, but uh, I said to Colin at one point, because uh, Colin says to me, do you want to keep doing these streams? Because, you know, Colin being humble, thinking, well, I don't know why I want to do them. And I'm like, shut up, you're my mate. We're doing these streams. I said, yeah. at the end of the day, this is the only stream I get to do that isn't actually work. Yes. It's, it, I can relax when I do this stream because it's not actually yeah. my job of work. When I do a stream on a Saturday or a Friday or a Monday on yeah. my own channel, that's my job. It's work. I'm, yeah. This is just, this is just, I don't know, farting about. So Yeah, I was just being terribly British, wouldn't I? Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to, don't want to deaden your brand, though, to be. No, so you were, you, you to sully your reputation at all. <laughs> you were like, do you want to do some more streams with me? I know I'm not worthy, sir, and my lord. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Of course I do, you numpty. You're a big dumb puppy, and everybody loves a big dumb puppy. Oh, I'm terrible, mate. You know, well, you, you are just a big dumb enough. I am. Can't help it. It is how it is, isn't it? I told you about the dog called Elvis, didn't I? You always remind me of Elvis. <laughs> if for those that don't know, when I used to do detailing, we went to one particular house. This guy was like a multimillionaire. But he was the most down-to-earth guy in the world. He'd, he'd walk out in the middle of the morning with like a pint in each hand, say, "Do you want a drink, lads?" And um, <laughs> multi-millionaire. We were working on his absolutely. Like, Ferrari. We were working on his Aston Martins and his and his Lamborghinis. But he had this dog called Elvis, and the first time we met Elvis, this dog was like six foot tall at the shoulder. It was basically a moose. Uh, and we, right. walked, we walked in, and he said, "Don't." He, because he said in advance when he could, he said, don't be scared of the dog. The dog is as soft as butter. It'll, it'll love you, whoever you are. So don't yeah. be scared of it when you first see it. We're like, okay. Walked in. And this, this, this thing just barreled across. It's like a big, long driver. And this thing just set off towards us at full whack. This thing is the size of a horse. And it's like some big mastiff, but it's the biggest creature you've ever seen in your entire life. Mm. Its head was the size of a car. And it just went blah 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 blah, ran towards us like we were his, like we were its best mate in the world, and just like ran up to us and just drooled everywhere, and was like dead excited. And we we're like, I'll bring spare trousers next time. Yeah. Because at on. first you see this thing barreling towards you, you, don't. But that's why he said, don't worry about it. It's dead soft. And it was the softest thing. It was the biggest dumbest dog I've ever met. It would be dead excited to see it if you just walked around the corner and came back again. It, it'd be like a brand new day. <laughs> So I always think of Elvis when I think of you. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I mean, yeah. Could you imagine you trying to do a stream with me and Tony Fairclough in it? Oh, I'd love it. I would love it. It'd be mental, wouldn't it? Because mm. we do encourage each other to be silly, don't we, whenever we meet up. It's like, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Tony, stick your face in a trifle. Yeah, all right, mate. Come on. <laughs> 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 He's brilliant. I love him. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're on chat. Let's have a look. People talking about restaurants and stuff. Um, Hansa says, Yeah, the Fox and Colin uh, tit episode was uh, enough to make anyone fall over. No, yeah. <laughs> many years ago, my friend had a dog she called Taxi. That was a scream at times when in the high street. <laughs> oh, yeah, Taxi, Taxi. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, my, my ex sister in law. My brother and ex sister in law, she wasn't my ex sister in law at the time. Um, they had two cats called Slap and Tickle. Oh, right, yeah. But they, their garden used to back onto a primary school field. So she had to go oh. out and shout the cats from time to time. Ah, oh, brilliant. They decided to rename them Fosters and Stella after about six months of going in the garden shouting Slap and Tickle. They decided it was a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Right, so we've got to do. I've not. I thought I'd finished this guy, and I haven't finished him yet. Flange. And of course, we will end up uh, when we can all finally meet up doing modcast. That will be one of them at some point. We've just got to yes. sort you out with Streamyard, didn't we, mate? Yeah, I still don't know. Have you ever heard back from them? Yeah, I told you they just said, "Yeah, it is a known thing. It does happen from time to time. Just reboot the PC." That's not really so, helpful, though, is it? It's if they don't know why. No, it happened to me a couple of times, but I've not had it happen uh, since I've been on Edge. I stopped using Chrome and moved over to Edge. 
uh. on this this particular uh logon i use chrome for e models yeah uh firefox for dads and edge for mine because i then okay. keep the stream yard logged in at all times well maybe next time i'll try it on edge and see what happens yeah and i know it goes against the grain but i've not had the issue on edge no have you i've got edge installed i use it occasionally whenever i get a a website that doesn't seem to work yeah um especially older websites yeah where you've got like a a particular dialogue box or drop down or something doesn't that's quite it work. yeah something doesn't quite kick in you Try know on one edge. of the option boxes and then i just go on edge and it seems to work so yeah don't know I, don't why. Know what, I, I don't know what it is but specifically websites for part work companies like diagostini and yeah. fan home and hachette they all seem to have like terrible websites that don't work i don't know what it is well, i've never come across a part work company it flash stuff and perhaps well, some of their code isn't the greatest either you know i've never yet experienced a part work company website that isn't in some way broken no. i don't know what it is it's really weird right what am i doing but i yes. haven't finished this guy apparently i've still got things to stick on to him so Bums and and would love to see her live with Tony and you all. Yeah, I mean, bless his art. You know, Tony um, works in the NHS, Lynn, like yourself, and has been trying to get out. He's obviously moved the house, and so he has been out of the loop for a long time, but obviously for legitimate reasons. Oh, yeah. And it's just tying up with him, you know, and he's, he's as conscious of it as we are because we love Tony Fitz. Oh yeah, it, it it was. I'd love to. I, it's a shame because he would be brilliant on the Monday night show, if not anywhere else. But yeah, I mean, you know, look we, at the carnage we caused at E models when we was all there. I mean, Pete, he just stood there, leant on the counter, and he's like, I, it, "Yeah, he was I've like, got, I've got I've no got customers in. Look at this lot. Look at them. Just look at them. This is <laughs> this is my builders. Look at them. Yeah, he's there. You can just see him think, sitting there thinking, <laughs> I have so no way to control this. Funny. What have I wrought? Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were just causing all kinds of people were coming in yeah we can give you that yeah you do realize you're getting everything for free today and pete's like what 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 <laughs> wait what wallet twitching yeah. yeah we appointed ourselves the staff decided we were all staff that day oh uh, yes yes yeah but we the only downside the today wasn't it and pete was like no 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 yeah. no don't do this to me <laughs> the problem is he got his revenge the next time because the next time me and ted turned up yeah uh, and we got there before Chris did, I think. Chris was there. Me and Ted turned up a little early. So within 20 minutes, we've had a brew. And Pete's got us stuck in shelves. <laughs> <laughs> putting, putting stock on shelves. I'm like, oh, so how did that happen? Yeah, you, you, had to do, you had to do physical work. I know. He's like, why are you here? You might as well stick some stock on a shelf if you want. He's like, oh. And then the worst bit for me was I got the bloody, um, I got all the stuff on the e-shelf. <laughs> uh, they've changed it now but in those days all the shelves had different designations like a b c d e yeah. a1 yeah. a2 uh so you get you get a printout of all of the stock items in your box yes you have a box full of things <laughs> and you'd have a printout of all the stock items and then a little code next and say which shelf they're going like a1 b7 whatever yeah i got the e-shelf stuff and um, the problem with the e-shelf stuff is that when they designed all their shelves if you walk across the warehouse, you're like, A, B, E, C, wait, what? D, <laughs> E, F, E, F, G, H, E, what? Yeah, E's everywhere. <laughs> and it's like, hang on, where's E? And you've got like E1, E2, E3. So it's like, I've got to put this thing on E4, but is that E4 over there or the other E4? <laughs> oh. And it was like, oh, how do you get, how do you cope with this? And they were like, yeah, you have to kind of get used to it. So I had to pick that bloody box up, didn't I? God damn it. Uh, Sarah Jane's off. She's not feeling so good at the moment, so she's going to pop off. Uh, stay safe. She says, I won't miss anything with Fox's building speed. The continental oh, drift is quicker. Uh, you yeah, know, you take I... care, Sarah Jane, because, yeah, if you need anything, love, don't forget we are about. Despite everything, take care. Hope yeah. you feel better. Yeah. Bless her. <laughs> continental drift uh so i say there is a kind of modcast on monday don't forget 
uh, and it is for charity. That's the um, charity sweet thing that you're doing, isn't it? Yeah, we've all got to put our balls in our mouths. Uh, that's going to go well. We've got to suck on our balls, apparently. <laughs> no strange from your feet. Uh, yeah, that's over on Chris's channel at nine o'clock, isn't it? Yep. Is that Dad back with us? Yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm Dad. Right, mate. All right, mate. Big hugs. Yeah, it's on, mate. Back out. Dad yeah. hugs. Back out, yeah. Aye. So you've done a bit more, Fox. What have you done since I've been gone? I take the hug back. <laughs> no, I've almost finished the dude. Look, see. Oh yeah, well done. Doing well, wasn't he? Proud of him. I'm oh, shut up. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I just, this mockery I get all the time. Yeah, you wouldn't have us any other way though. I shouldn't complain. Normally, I have to pay to get this kind of mockery. So, <laughs> you guys do it for free, you chumps. Yeah, Absolutely. but you'd, you'd know there was something wrong if you weren't getting it, you see. I haven't had it for years. Oh, no, wait, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neris. Steady, Neris. <laughs> Colin's, having, Colin's having a little thought train there. You can hear little giggles. <laughs> there's a thought process going on the back of his oh, mind. Oh, yes, yes. It's a, yeah, you know, his brain's gone off on a little adventure. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he said end. <laughs> you know, yeah. Colin's like a five year old. It's when you can't hear him that you have to be worried. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Like two year olds, when you can hear when you can't hear them, it's fine. Five year olds, when you can't hear them, be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fifty five or fifty four even, year old festers that go suddenly very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Colin, Certain members of the Fester household get a bit alerted by that. Is that resin your soul in there, Colin? It is, mate. Have you got a mask on of any sort? Nope. No. No. Why not? Because I couldn't be asked, mate. Dad, can not you give far me a enough look? away from my breathing. It makes no difference. No, there's dust can... in the atmosphere, mate. It, you're using a very fine saw there, look. Very fine teeth, and it's causing dust. Nearly done. Where's your dust mat? At least that is static and it'll draw the dust down. It's fine. No, Dad, it'll give him the look, please. It'll oh, get wet in it. a minute. There you go, there's a finger of shame. Yeah. There finger of shame. Oh, damn. Yeah, it didn't take long, did it? It's like, yeah, but I can't juggle chainsaws if I wear the helmet. Hey, mate, I smoked for 38 years. My lungs are knackered anyway. Mm. We're still giving you the look and the finger of shame. That's mm. all right. You're welcome. Everybody in chat, please give the finger of shame as well, if you would. Yeah, it's not getting sanded. <laughs> the Dremel won't be out on it. And yet. when he said it was a fine saw, he didn't mean it was a damn good saw. It is a fine saw, right? It's a fine saw. <laughs> <coughs> it's a fine saw, and also a fine saw. Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, you've got all the fingers of the shames coming in chat now. Yeah, yes. good luck for that. No worries. A finger of shame. Look how he's brushing off. Yeah, I don't care. He's really, he doesn't yeah, really care. Let's get it all in the atmosphere properly. Yeah. That's a wet bloody thing. Stop wimping. <laughs> that way, you are. You made your point. Yeah, I'll do a bit more on my bike now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what the but, hell? Yeah. Oh. He's muttering now, listen to him. Yeah. Guys. I'm not even on camera, I just realised. <laughs> like a spoon. I can't blame me, folks. That was like time lapse. She'd done that off camera, and when you put it back, it hadn't changed. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, oh. I could go off you, you know. <laughs> nah, yeah. how, are, how are them Tamiya paints treating you? They're treating me very well. I even <laughs> used one today. Yeah. Yeah. I used use one on this motorbike I'm doing. On that <laughs> motorbike that he's not cheating on. 
when you say you use them, do you mean you accidentally may have just dropped them onto it and made it look like it was painted? Well, it seemed a shame. It, the right <laughs> colour was there at the right time. What more could I do? I had to, I had to test it, Fox. Yeah. I, I had to test the paint. That was it. Always be tested. Yeah, it needed <laughs> testing. It's the fact that the bike seemed to build itself. <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no way on earth there has ever been an Italeri kit that builds itself. No. Actually, though, saying that, they have got, <laughs> they have gone together really, really well. Is yeah. he on drugs, Dad? Is he on drugs again? No, no, he's not, mate. I've got, <laughs> I'm amazed myself as an Italeri kit and it's gone together. It's been really, gone together well. really beautiful, wouldn't it, mate? Yeah. Not so much as an issue, dude. Oh, this do you know what? Seem do you know another paint I've used on it, Fox? You'll, you'll be impressed with this one. Go on. A dura 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 aluminium. Oh, durable mooming. Yeah. Well, I like a nice bit of durable mooming. Yeah, I've used that on it as well. Ooh, it's nice. What brushed or sprayed? Sprayed. Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon? I think it's fantabulous. Does it get Tommy? Is it Tommy Two Thumbs good? Oh God, yeah. Wait till you see it. It, it gleams. It does. It gleams. gleams. And of course, you know this bike hasn't built itself. There's no cheating going on or anything nope. like that. Um, no. And Graham and Robert saying, "Boy, if I see evidence on here, then you will get punished, Dad." Uh, uh yes, so he's gluing his bike together as you speak, um, Graham. Well, yeah. I say that. He's I yeah. take it the engine and the gearbox are both in. No, the engine's in. Yeah, the gearbox mysteriously had everything suddenly attach itself to it. Y yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to give him a finger of shame, Graham? Well, so Reynolds said, Dad, you slipped, you tested durable movement, you didn't actively use it. Yeah, I tested it. That was it. I had to test it on something because I know how good it's reported to be. Don't encourage him, sorry. And I had to. But do you know what? I painted the engine with Fox. Here's another one. Go on. Cool. Here you go. Lead belcher. <gasps> good girl. Sprayed or brushed? Brushed, of course. Well, you can spray it. I uh, yeah, I know, but it's a, it's a ball lake, but you can do it. I know. But then I had to. Use some non oil on it as well. Oh, good girl. And then I had to do a nice dry brush after that. And that, that was what got me on the start. And I just went on from there, really. I just snowballed, really. And before you know it, you'd built the entire container ship. Oh. And now Graham McRobert said, Glass eggs for four months. Listen, mate, I've done three. That was enough already. I ain't going back. I, uh, I think it's guilty as charged. Finger of shames have been issued. Yes, I, I did. I ran out of spoons. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Spoons! Yeah. I think Lynn needs to be the judge on this one that Dad has cheated and passed sentence. What is the punishment for cheatage? Lynn's on my side. She won't. Uh... Lynn's on my side. So, uh yeah. Punishment for being convicted of this cheating escapade should be that you have to redo and build the Ed Force One. Oh no 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 no! I reveal seven four seven. No 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 no. Me birthday's been and gone now, mate. You can't. <laughs> Christmas. Mm. I think there should Graham be some kind of penalty issued. Graham but Robert said hard labour should be. Yes. I'd done it, mate. I'd done three months in Colchester. <coughs> Steady. I've just made a terrible mistake, or just a terrible realisation. Uh-oh. I've glued yeah. these little flippy flappy things on the back of his jump pack. And they look really cool, but I've just realised that makes him impossible to put into a skirmish case. Ah! And no, there's five of these guys. There's five of these guys. No, I've got no, to you use your scalpelage and cut room for his wings to slot into. 
Yeah. Uh, Johnny's asking what stream is on Monday. Um, it's on Chris's channel at 9 p.m. And it's where these idiots are all eating. We're eating our balls. Sour sweets of sourness. Yeah. We're going to put balls in our mouths. That's as much as Again. I know. Again. But yes, we're doing a little charity thing. Um, it's, oh, I can't remember the web address, but it's basically a place that um, you buy these sweets and a portion of it goes to, ch to a Scottish Association for Mental Health. And basically they're supposed to be like the sourest sweets in the world. And the challenge is to see if you can keep them in your mouth for more than 20 seconds. Without all the drool coming out the corners of your mm. mouth. Or all the poop coming out the other end. God, that's the perfect size for Chris. That's the remote. <laughs> I still yeah. think that Chris could actually get in the car and drive it. Yeah. I still can't believe how the wheel smells like Boba Fett. It's just amazing. <laughs> I also can't believe how heavy this damn thing is. It's huge, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to be massive. Yeah, I size put a link in for the sweetpunks.com. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so basically, all it is, you... you, you you buy whatever you want. They sell all of the sweets, but they sell these sour ball things that the challenge is just to uh, to keep it in your mouth for 20 seconds. I think it's just a portion of the proceeds from buying them go to charity, basically. Yeah. I think it's the Scottish Association for Mental Health, or SAM, yeah. which is, you know, a good charity. The reason That's it's the nice. Scottish Association is it's a Scottish company. So. And not only that, it's, it's great for me because I get to see you all like, all squirming whilst I don't have to. Oh, brilliant. What cunning excuse have you come up with? Um, I didn't realise it was this Monday, so I didn't get any. No, I, I wasn't even told about it either. Sigh, you failed. If you didn't tell Col Colin... Then again, Col, did you just not read all the comments in the mod chat? I had most of the chats muted, mate, because my phone goes on and me otherwise. Ah, do you, not, do you not regularly check the mod chat? No, because once... Once... Uh, they all get talking about Dungeons and Dragons and lightsabers. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I lose the will to live when there's 55,000 messages from Vincent about Donald Trump. And Damn. yeah, I'm like, yeah, I can't. So I don't bother. Panzer Koenig says, Fox, question. How do you know what Boba, Boba Fett smells like? Oh, you might not have been here at the start. Basically, the plastic this tyre is made out of smells exactly like a vintage 1978 Boba Fett action figure. I worry about you. When I was a kid and I had all the Star Wars figures, none of them smelled of anything. They were just plastic figures, except for some reason, Boba Fett had this specific smell. And it's exactly that. So I reckon that there must have been something on that figure that was made of a slightly different plastic and had a smell to it. Because other figures didn't smell, but Boba Fett had this smell to him. And I think there was one other figure, but I can't remember who it was. It might have been like an Imperial officer or something, I don't know. I think, you, I think you've been thrown under the bus by Sai. It's in the messengers. I'm innocent. Plus, I'm not regularly invited to hangouts. So, again, I'm innocent. This falls to you, Fox. You've always got an open invite to mine, so You know that, mate. Doesn't fall to me. As does Fox. It totally falls to Colin for not reading the mod chat. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, my excuse... Well, I say excuse my reason, and I think it's valid. But why is it why is it my fault? Because it's your group. You should then see that it's an important message for my attention and bring it to my alertness. Exactly. I, I was not aware that you did not know and hadn't found out some other way. You no, know, you know I knew that group. No, I didn't know that you didn't know. You might have but you might have had conversations with other people. There might have been conversation of it in your own chats. I don't know. No, I I, no. I tell you because I, you know, I it's know. totally Chris's fault anyway, so sure. I know jack shit about gaming and all of that. Lot, and it's like, yeah. and if Chris's... it's just political, I'm just like, yeah, I can't be doing with that. So. It's Chris's fault. So apologies, sorry, but Yeah. And I will say the same as what we've said to Fox, as Mike knows. You're always welcome in our hangouts, mate. You know that. Yeah. If you want to come in and say hello, sorry, you're more than welcome. You've got an open invite. If you're at a loose end... PM. You know, I finished one PM us, mate. It's just, you know, I'm I don't proud. know when you're about. But, um, yeah. I'm proud of Fox, Cole. He's, he's built one in two and a quarter hours. 
He's built a dude. Hold up a minute. No, 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 no. One, I've got to sit back in my chair. Two, I've got to do that. And three, I've got to sit and just savour this moment. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. You've built that whole dude from the ground up in... Wow. Yeah. Pulled out the barrel. I salute you. Two hours. I hate, 40 you. I hate you guys. Why? Ow. Now, if a bit had fell off of that, I would have let out a little bit of wee. <laughs> Shut up. I am proud of you, mate. Oh, it's a baby steps. I'm so I take, proud. I take time when I build things. I'm savouring the flavouring, as it were. Do you really? I do. Wow. I do. So you're basically saying I don't, saying I don't like to I talk about to it. You know, I don't often talk about it, but I do take my time with things. You know, like Dad never talks about getting a hug of Mama Fox. Yeah. So do you think I need to slow down then? Because I've nearly got this Valkyrie ready for primer. Just ask him. Because I'll slow down. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> well, the thing is, I would say yes, because at some point you're going to be like, crap, I've got nothing left to build now. I've got a bomb in. I had a on start. Yeah, you'll have built that in a week. In a day, that's actually a very quick build. The wasp bomb because it goes together beautifully. It's like Don't tell me that. done. There you go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have no room because I've got warhammer everywhere, and I and I've not fallen down the hole yet. But what really. you need to do is you need to get rid of all the other rubbish that's not warhammer then, and just forget all that nonsense. Oh, just just have warhammer. That's what I. That's my hobby. I do warhammer once a day, once a week, <laughs> once a day. I do warhammer <laughs> on once a, a day, all day. Yeah, I only do Warhammer on days ending in Y. Yep, I only do Warhammer on days of the week or at the weekends. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean I've done well. I built me built me rope bridge as well. Mm. <laughs> that rope bridge is kick ass. It's got to have spider people. How I've many got... issues? Which reminds me, how many? Uh, you've got all your Rossi issues, haven't you? I think. Did you say? Uh, no, I've got. <clears throat> oh, hello. I've got the last the last three shipments are all coming as one. Oh, so right. there's going to be like 12 issues coming as oh. one large package so that I can uh, get it finished. So, so as and when it, it arrives, basically. Like. So, so, so what is that, 12 issues left or three lots of 12 issues? Uh, no, left. 12 issues left, mate. Wow. Yeah. And I thought there'd be a lot be more because you've, you've, all you've got is like the chassis of the engine, haven't you? No, I've got all the front wheel... And that all built in subsections. I've got a, a box full up of bits of the Rossi bar. I've got all the fairings and all of that gubbins. Oh, right. just, all I'm waiting for is the rear the rear swing arm assembly joined to the frame. I've got the rear wheel all built, front wheel, forks, all that built. So how are they how are they doing the, the markings on it? Is it all just like pre-painted <coughs> metal or uh it's all pre-painted. Um all is the metal? fairings metal? the fairings are plastic, but the frame is metal. Engines yeah. all metal, swing arms all metal, uh, exhausts and that. Um, yeah, all the um, livery of the the bike is all painted and everything. So that's what I meant. That's what yeah, you haven't got a, all the sponsorships and shizzle. You haven't got to worry about that. It's already done. But yeah, so once that's on there and I can actually get the bike on its wheels, the rest of it is just lipstick and mascara, mate. Yeah. So I'll probably be able to do that in two videos, mate, if I'm honest. Cool. I did wonder about the livery because it's like the, the, the Dodge Charger is just basically black. So they've just painted the metal parts black, which is fine. Yeah, no, nah, the bike's got all of the, the detail on it. It's, it really is a stunning piece, mate. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably, I'll like say once that's done, I'll then probably invest in the Eleanor, Eleanor build and do the uh, Mustang from the Gone in 60 Seconds movie because... Oh, yeah. That's is that a hashette, isn't it? I think, or uh, it Eagle Moss, Eagle Moss. That's it. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. That looks pretty good. So, yeah, because that will then you know, that's smoking money, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, it keeps that going. But yeah, if I can score one for free off of Eagle Moss, that would be even Yay! better. That'd be even better. But, yeah, you know, I mean, it's with their marketing people at the moment, so you never know. Yeah, we just have to keep niggling them. So, uh, yeah but yeah it's, it, i was looking at that this charger and it's like uh, what i'll do when i finished it is in the boot of my car i still have from many years ago like a load of little um 
wax applicators and a pot of I can't remember which dodo juice wax, but I've got a pot of wax in the back of my car. Oh right, yeah. from the days before we we actually painted it with the matte lacquer. Yeah. When it was when it was a shiny car. So what I'm going to do when I finish this charger is because it's going to be covered in hand jam and and everything. I'm going to yeah. give it a good good clean off all the chromey bits and all the paint, and then I'm going to actually wax it. Yeah, give it a proper automotive waxage. Well, I'm going to basically do uh, detail it like I would have done in the old days when I did it for a job. Well, the only thing I can't do is like, I, I can't clean the glass because I don't know what the yeah. glass cleaner would do to the plastic window. But That Rossi bike isn't that much smaller than my mini moto that I've got. <laughs> it is pretty big. Because when I had the workshop, if we had had a particularly good day's welding on bike frames and, and, and stuff, Mm. Um, you used to get to do laps of the workshop car park on a little mini moto, <laughs> and I've still got it in the boot of my motor over the garage. And I keep <laughs> wanting to bring it to the bench so that I can strip it, yeah. spray it, and do it in the livery, you know, just as a, a keepsake because I'm never going to ride it again. So, no. you know, but that Rossi bike isn't that much smaller than that. <laughs> You could. I wonder if you could do like, you know, like some people take like, um, like uh, fake weapons and make them into real firing weapons. Yeah. I wonder if you could somehow like swap out the engine in that Rossi bike for an actual engine and get it to work. Well, the Mini Moto's got its own seventy nine cc engine in it, so <laughs> yeah, it's it is one of those. So I shall use that color scheme on the Mini Moto basically and. <laughs> obviously print some decals out for it and just faff around because yeah why not <laughs> why not so i can have that in the lounge and i can have a full-size mini moto on the side next to me you know yeah because i'm stupid like that and why wouldn't yeah. you want to have a mini moto on your bench but you know what it's a wonderful kind of stupid yeah but no once it's done i shall uh, get another part work on the go because yeah, yeah. is that well that is that what's tickling your fancy like the eleanor yeah i didn't realize this right but there's a load of like there's a load of like french part works companies that do all kinds of stuff yes i'm watching one guy build a peugeot 205 oh yeah i've got my eye on the Ford gt 40 as well from Eagle oh, yeah. Moss. <gasps> but there's i mean but i mean there's a lot of there's all the nice luxury cars but there's a lot of things just like that like there's there's one guy yeah. building a one eight scale trabant yeah you've seen the volkswagen there's... beetle the cabrero though yeah, yeah. The but there's there's a load that are just like just normal cars like the, yeah. the peugeot 205 gt yeah and it's just a part work and it's like a million parts it's amazing uh, what was that oh yeah there's a geezer there isn't there of course there is a spud spud that's right so that's what they are okay yeah uh, do I put the gunners in? I could take it. Oh, well, yeah, because I've put all heads on it, can't I? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fester's Brain. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you talk your way through your thinking and we can all take part in it. I like that. That Valkyrie's kind of big, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. I isn't see it? other people's builds and they don't look like big, but when I see it there in your in your in your yeah. hands, it's like it's not small. No, no it's, a, it's a big old bird, isn't it? It's like, whoa, have you a bit of whoa, some of that, isn't it? It's a big old bird, quite literally. Yeah. I mean, I got the saw out because I cut the windows in half, didn't I? So that we can have it as open. Open yeah. canopy. So, yeah. And I've got it in half because I want to paint all of this shizzle, see, before oh, yeah. I slap it together, see? So, I assume yeah. it goes together quite nicely so you can easily glue it without messing up the paintwork. Oh, yeah, absolutely, mate. It, it pretty much just click and fix. But I might take the tit off of the corner of this yeah. and mag it so it just goes click. You know what I mean? So you can have a looky-loo inside. And okay. then I suppose well, having a flappy door in the back, you can do it through there, can't you? Well, you? Can you not just make the roof removable for easy lookage? Because if, yeah. if, you, if you do the side wall, you won't really, you'll still have darkness. But if you take the roof off, but then again... Yeah, the I don't want to glue the roof off. on if I can help it, because I want to be able to go, oh, have a looky-loo, you know? Mm. But now then the, again, now I think the doing the bulkhead, Cole. Oh? Put an LED in the bulkhead. Well, yeah, I want to light it, mate. Uh, uh, there should also be, if you look on the inside of the roof, there should be little round light sconces. Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to light them up if I'm truthful. I was going to say, yeah, drill all those out. I don't know how you do it. But... Yeah, 
Well, it's, been, well, it's easy. You just get a drill and drill it out. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean without because you'd have to. I mean, I know how you'd, do that, but I mean, you'd lose that. You'd lose the shape of it. I don't know how you replace that dome shape. Uh, easy. Put dome shape bulb in. There is that. You know, because I can lose, I can lose the spikes in the rockets. You know what I mean? And then have the wire come out of this bit. Yeah. Drop down. Stick a battery in there. Disguise it as a an ammo case or something like that. And Bob's your uncle, wouldn't it? Or you know, you just have them looking like wires because it's yeah. orc. They could just be made to look like cables. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna because I've got the tank thing to go on the top and all all of that gubbins. I don't oh. think it should have legs. I think you should uh, give it treads, tank tracks. Yeah, but like underneath it, so like the they're like they're not on the side; they're underneath it, so it yeah. can go on the tracks or it can fly, and the tracks are just there. Well, yeah, because look, look at the gap there. You could put a nice bit of trackage in there, couldn't you? Yeah. If you got yourself, I don't know how you'd do it. You, you could, if you got yourself a couple of cheap chibi tanks, a couple oh, of them deep print it. Oh yeah, you could do that. I was gonna say you get yourself a couple of them like Montoon tanks. You could because I them. can. Uh, don't forget, I three D print my own wheels and tires because I've got squishy rubber filament. So Ooh. I do the tires with the black rubber filament, and I do the wheel rims with the uh, resin print. I can what is it, Doctor? I'm afraid you've tracks. got. What is it, Doctor? I'm afraid you've got squishy rubber filament. Oh, no. So tank uh, tracks for that and a sow for the bone blade. That's what I've got to do this week, then, isn't it? Mm. Uh, Panzer Koenig's office says, Later, folks, you all take care. Some of you see, see you, some later, of you geese. later on JC Stream or Fox's Stream. Yeah, see you later, Panzer. Take care, buddy. I mean, we're only going to be on for about another, what, 10, 15 minutes anyway. Yeah, something like that. But, yeah, because... Uh, Ross Medlock's just come in and said, Morning, all. Hello, Ross. All right, geez, how you doing, mate? Hello, Ross. Got a new motor. Hello, Ross. How you doing? I do like him with the old scarf of room. You know, it looks nice. Yeah? I thought you might like that, you see. The Ross Abbott look. Flattering. I knew you'd like that. But, yeah, so... I know you too well, don't I, Cole, in some you ways. You do, mate. You really do, mate. But in a nice way, yeah. Yeah, help. in a totally platonic way. Oh, you thought your hand was between two pillars. They weren't pillars, mate. I thought I said pillocks. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Uh, he goes behind there. So, so I mean, Flutteridge and Flutteridge works out well, doesn't it? Look at that. Have a look. <laughs> Get in. Have you. Some of that. See, just when great minds work, great minds think alike. So how we did it, I don't know. But it's... Well, you know, you sit there. You're clever. You load the gun, Whoa. knowing that I'm going to go. Yeah, I'll do that, and I'll just sit and build it. Broke bridge, crow's nest. Yeah, you open know, canopy. I'll tell you what, you could do with coal. Ha ha ha! Crow's nest. Following week. Here, fox. What? Got crow's nest. Well, that's why when you showed me the rope bridge, I went. Now all it is is a waterfall, but that one didn't stick. So that's in there. I still want to do some kind of squiggy trailer with a catapult in it, and. I could just imagine it would like, but it would require a lot of custom printed squigs, but like some trailer, but with squigs just like as if squigs are just flying out of it because it's been jostled around on a bumpy road. You'd <laughs> yeah. have, to have, have squigs on really thin, clear filaments. Yeah, fibre optic or something <gasps> like that. Or, oh, you know what you could do? What? You know what you could do? Get yourself some crappy, cheap nylon guitar strings. Oh, yeah. They're, they're clear. They're clear and they're flexible. Yeah, I mean, I've got some Ernie Ball Super Slinkies, but they're metal. Yeah, no, I mean, just some like some clear, like very yeah, fine, clear. Cheap, like, like nylon ones, yeah. Yeah, because you know, the then ones. you'd have it, you'd have, drill a little hole in the squig and the base, you'd have it glued on either end, and it'd be like that, as if it's like just being <laughs> jostled out of the. Oh. You do realise this bone blade's going to end up about three and a half foot long, isn't it? It'll weigh about eight and a half kilograms, or the same as an eight and a half kilogram child. Yeah, is that <laughs> I reckon I could get the Bane Blade to take up this entire shelf unit that it's currently sat on. Yes. Also, the official phrase for this project is now jostling squigs. Yes. That's also a brilliant phrase that you need to say as often as possible. Jostling squigs. Jostling squigs. Squig cult. Flange handles. Uh, whoa, 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 pump the brakes, Cole, Fox, clever, insane, or orc-like, maybe. 
Yeah, he's right. saying I'm not clever. Yeah, I don't know about using clever when I'm playing to me. Oh, poor old fox. I, I, I don't say I, I would agree I'm not clever. I don't do the smarts. That's another free d job done. I'm not clever, I'm just jousy. Job's a good one. Job is a good one. I quite like the armour on these, um, the Reavers, the sort of the slim line Primaris armour. I quite like the look of it, especially like the, the leg armour and the stuff around the feet and ankles. It's just, it's got a nice look to it. Oh yeah, mint. I, mu I much prefer it to the, to the regular, you know, intercessor armour. Can have a spider pig for your trouble. Go on then. <coughs> that was a good spider pig. That was mine. I've been trying to do a big trump all night, but it won't, it won't. It refuses to do anything until, <laughs> until we're up, not streaming, and then I'll do a big That was trip. so funny. That was. That's up there with Dad's microphone. We, <laughs> especially yeah. when it was that immortal, momentary silence where you were. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it was gold, oh, mate. It was gold, mate. Oh yeah. <laughs> not going on there, is it? Another Citadel paint unit yep. might get in. But a couple of weeks ago, Colin and I finished the stream, and literally within about five seconds of finishing the stream, I just did this massive BBC comedy fart. Oh, brilliant. And it was a proper comedy fart. It was a proper, like, somebody making a mouth noise to be a fart. Yeah, proper rip, rip snort, wasn't it? Yeah, it probably sounded like somebody making a fart noise rather than actually farting. Yeah. Lynn's going spider pig. See, they all know me. They all know me so well. Wouldn't be the same. I, I was dead made up when you did your first spider pig on this stream. Uh, Retro Rabbit Studio says he's got a masterpiece scale transformer of Omega Supreme. That's the size of a small child. I don't understand transformers. <laughs> I have no concept of such I must matters. admit, I've often wanted to do either a large Bumblebee or Optimus Prime. Yeah, Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. I'm thinking of getting a Primaris dude. <gasps> what, one of the big ones? Yeah. What, one of the um, um, uh, the action figures? Yeah. Yeah, I've got I've got one. I've not figured out how to take it apart yet. I must sort that out at some point. You get one I am the... not even going to ask what one of them is because I feel I'd be invoked to make yet another purchase. It's one of these, <laughs> but it's an action figure, so it's about a foot tall. Oh, is that the one that was on Amazon? Yeah. A it's a, uh, what do you call it? Space Marine? <laughs> no, the, the manufacturer, I can't remember what they're called. They make a lot of action figures. It's a, I've got one yeah. over there, but... I, I, ne on. Mecha, Necker. No, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. There you go, I'll show you. It's that dude there. Yeah, I've seen them, yeah, about 25, 30 quid, yeah? Yeah. 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 I've got to. I've got to figure out how to take him apart yet, or watch somebody on YouTube take him apart. Get the saw out. out. No. no. Bit of brute force to do it. That's what take I take it apart, paint it, one. put it back together again. McFarlane yeah. toys. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's who did all my um, ACDC stuff, figures, and Jimmy Page and all of that. I do have somewhere. I don't know where it is though. I think it might be in the loft. I do have somewhere a bag full of first edition original uh halo action figures from mcfarland toys from master, the early 2000s yeah, master chief stuff so it's like the big foot tall master chief i've got yeah. a halo 3 and a halo 3 brute which is massive yeah i've got a ha original halo first edition elite big one yeah but i do need to repack i've got a I think I've got an original original Halo Master Chief, and I've got a Halo 3 Master Chief, and I do need to repaint the original Halo one. Yeah, I remember that big one that you did on your channel. It's mint. Oh, yeah. Something but, about a Master Chief. I did a Sprue Kits build on my channel ages and ages and ages ago now. Yeah. One of my earliest videos. 
filmed on a potato. Really. A potato camera. It's so frustrating, though, isn't it, when you think back to some of your original videos, because you think, God, if only I had had the, the, the money to get more or better equipment. The thing is, you look it at some of the builds you did, and you think, oh, I wish I'd filmed that with me modern stuff. You know? The thing is, it doesn't always hold true, because, like, every time I've... Because I still film on an iPhone. Same but way. every time I've upgraded to a, a more modern iPhone, I've had different issues. Like, yes. right at the minute... I started off with an iPhone 5, then a 5S. Then I went to a 6. Yeah. And now I'm filming on a 2020 SE. Yeah. This is my current camera. It's I just yeah. use it purely for filming. I don't use it for yeah. anything else. Um, and it's a wonderful camera. <coughs> it's a wonderful little phone. But everything comes out kind of puce. Yeah, I find that when a, I film the a... colour balance, my, my, think my hands look a bit... A bit pinky red and i have to really fart yeah, around you've with got the to do a lot of post-production with it yeah yeah man no, there's not so much that i know but it, I, i've still not figured it out I, I always come out looking a bit like like i've been on the port too much so, I've, so yeah. it must be different lenses and different cameras yeah. it's quite your, your coffee looks like baby nappy yeah i don't quite know why that happens mm. so i've had a lot of color issues like like it looks fine on the phone you, um, have you cleaned the lens on it at all but yeah that doesn't change the colour, Dad. <laughs> it would if the lens was mucky enough. No, I clean the lens all the time. Actually, um, I, I, I swab it with alcohol. Just a thought. Just a thought. Just a thought. Sometimes <laughs> the simplest of things... Yes, this is true. That's why I, that's why I do it, because it's like... The first thing I do when I film is I'll get a cotton bud and some IPA. Yeah, just... try as saying to your thing, just pull it at the joints. Cool. figure. I still need to watch no someone need on... for a saw. No, I was winding Fox up, Si. I still need to watch someone on YouTube do it so I don't break it. So he said he needs you to help him work out filming on the phone, Fox, even by the webcam. You don't uh, want to, don't want to uh, film on the webcam anyway. No, don't film on a webcam. No. Garbage. Um, no. If it's if it's an iPhone, I can help you. If it's an Android, I can't. Unless you use the same camera app that I do. Oh, yeah, we won't talk about you and camera. Right? No, filmic, filmic, filmic pro. Yeah, fourteen quid down the loo. That was why. What's wrong why? with it? Because it nigh on fried me phone. That bloody thing. And why did it fry your phone? Because it it basically cooked it. Why? I don't understand. Uh, because it changes all the settings, and it it's a bit like overclocking a PC. The iPhones don't like it. Mine's fine. It never gets hot. Yeah, my phone, right? You could have uh, put on the sun and it would have uh, still had the the shape of the phone, mate. You weren't <laughs> filming it like 4K 120 frames a second or anything, were you? No, I used the settings that we spoke about. That's weird. Mine gets yeah. a little tiny bit warm. The only thing I have to remember to do is not have it plugged into the power all the time. Yeah. It gets Same really happened hot. to you as well, Dad, didn't it? Yeah. Really? That's weird because I've never had a problem with it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah, I, I don't know. What, it in the end. what phones were they? iPhone sixes. Yeah. Mm, that's weird. No, I've mm. never had a problem with it. I mean, my phone got warm, but... Oh, no, these got... were seriously hot. Wow. And it was, you know, iPhone, Apple, Apple battery, all of that, you know. Wow. But yeah, it just basically, um, I suppose, for the processing and that, it had changed some of the settings to enable them features, but the phone didn't like it. It just I don't got know. hotter and hotter weird. and hotter. And then the phone would shut down because mm. you would get the temperature has been exceeded warning come up on the phone and it would just shut yeah. the phone down. I've That's never it. had that. I mean, it, it used to get warm. So what I learned to do was um, minimise how often it was plugged into the power because I yeah. used to have it plugged into the power to transfer the video files, but that will make it even warmer. And I also yeah. used to drop the brightness down on the screen because I didn't need to see the Yeah, no, nah, I played with that. Wow. Drop the brightness down, add it not on a power pack, you know, and all of that. Wow. It just that's, got hotter and hotter to the point you couldn't actually touch the phone. That's weird and dangerous, but that's really, really hot. Yeah, that's yeah. really that's weird. I'd say I never literally never had that problem. Yeah, it was like the lithium battery was full, and then it, you know, the battery was changed at Apple. Tried it again once a new battery was put in, still went the same. It's like I'm gonna uninstall that. Wow, I don't know why I did that then. Like I said, I've never no. had a problem with it myself. No, so it was like, no. Because I asked Dad about it, because yours did it, wouldn't it? And I said, are you using filming? And he went, yeah. 
did that on mine, mate. It's clearly Chris's fault, whatever it was. Absolutely. Yeah, so no, I've, I've never had that problem with mine at all. And I've used it on, I used it on, the, I tried it on the five, but the five was a bit too slow and primitive, and that did get hot. But it yeah. was fine on the six and the six. Yeah, and no, no, it's, uh, weird. Weird. I don't understand that then. Yeah, neither, neither do I, mate. It was like, yeah. But like I say, since I stopped using it, phone's been fine. It was that one, the iPhone six. Uh, retro well, use. Retro Rabbit uses a Canon M50 and a Sony Xperia Z2 for filming. I mean, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I would much rather film on an actual proper grown-up camera. But uh, the, the, the restrictions that I have are, one, I'm not rich. Yeah. yeah you made a uh, and every time I've looked at a camera that's not too expensive, um, it's been a case of you can't have it plugged into power while you're filming. Well, that's no use at all. Yeah. And because mm. you get like a 20 minute battery life or there's no easy way to transfer files from the camera to the computer without messing around it's like well i need to be able to plug it in so it's plugged yes. into power i need it to run and film i need to just basically drag and drop files yeah and i did see one some old sony one like an a6000 or something that's like two or three hundred quid which is actually quite cheap for a for a, a camera yeah um, but it took me a lot of digging just to find out what resolutions the video it feels it's like wow why are they hiding that yeah and uh, I, it looked Sometimes. like it films at 1080p but only at 60 frames a second I'm like well i don't want that i want 30 frames a second so yeah yeah uh, and then you can't have it plugged into power but you can buy because it won't it won't do anything if you plug it into power it can recharge or it can work but then you can buy like a fake battery that goes in it and you can plug that in and it'll kind of convince it down. I'm like, no, I don't, I just want to turn it on. And, yeah, you want to turn it on film and not not worry, mate. Um, yeah, that's what I found with uh, the film. It, but I've been recently using the iPhone XS just, to, uh, just as a test to film on that. Mm. Uh, there's a couple of videos I've done on that and they do seem a hell of a lot clearer. Yeah, it, I mean it does depend. I mean, I'm needing as much post production. It's um, I'm playing with it at the moment, just I mean, to I, see whether I'm going to move to that one. Sorry. I, I mean, I did find, and it's the weird thing is, I mean, the only reason I didn't like, I don't like the inbuilt iPhone camera app is because you can't control independently the work balance and focus and anything else. Yeah, that's the only thing I like about the filmic app. But um, the the one thing that disappointed me about the iPhone cameras is that. Although it wasn't the best quality in terms of image quality, I've not found a lens on an iPhone as good as the iPhone 5S. Yeah. Because the 6 and the the 6 makes everything overexposed and bleached and and kind of everything's faded and washed out. Yeah. And and the S the SE is a bit like that. Now I know sometimes if you film in HDR and then play it back on non-HDR, that can wash out all the colours, but it's not that because I've got HDR turned off. So I was quite disappointed in the iPhone 6's camera because the, the lens, the, the software was just like, everything's bleached out and overexposed. I don't, I don't like this. Nah. But the iPhone 5 is just a clunky old dinosaur now. You can't film on it. So. Nah, that's right. And you can't find any to replace the ones I had. So. Nah. They've had their day, haven't they? At the end of yeah. the day, it's just how it is. It's technology well, in progress, isn't it, mate? The only ones you can get now are refurbs on like Amazon and eBay, but you get yeah. them and they, they last about a week. Yeah. Because they refurb, but the battery's just crap, so. Yeah. I like the SE. I'd have to tweak with the colour a little bit, which is a pain in the bum, but. But it's weird that you have that problem with Filmic. I've never literally. Never yeah, had any problem yeah. With it. it was quite like alarming, that. mate. And it, honestly, you couldn't touch the phone, mate. And I just thought lithium ion battery. Mm, go bang, bang. Yeah, don't want have, that. I can only think there's like a maybe a, there was maybe a setting or something that was not quite right or I don't know what it would have been. Uh, I can't well, imagine. Well, I can't imagine. Settings that was from the message, mate. Yeah, no, they that's, that's... About it, didn't they? It was... Yeah, that's just weird. I don't know what it would be. No, but uh, maybe it's just a I don't know. Trapping on two phones. It's yeah. Hmm. A bit odd. Hmm. Uh, I know not. But then again, I mean. But when I import into Premiere, I can do all the white balance in there We're using stuff in there, so it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I do all my all my that kind of stuff in Mivavi, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it was on the old iPhone 5S, you literally turned it on, filmed, and put it in the computer and <laughs> yeah. edited it, and that was it. There was no farting around. But with well, the this six... is what I've found on the one I'm using at the moment, the XR, is I just set it up, press and hold the screen till the little yellow box comes up, bump, and film away. Bob's your uncle, straight into Premiere Pro, and no real <coughs> adjustments are needed. Yeah, that's, that's what I used to do, but sometimes I wanted to change the... The uh, so the difficulty you've got there is that you're locking when you lock the exposure, you also lock the white balance and the focus. Yeah. So if you lock that, every time you move away from that focus point, it goes out of focus. Who told me to do that? I know that's what I used to do. But then I've got this SE now, this this iPhone SE that the auto focus is like that. Yeah. So I can actually have the auto focus turned off, uh, turned on, and it's it's fast enough because on the old yeah. iPhone five, it'd be like. Because you used to say to me, oh, when you're moving, it's going out of focus, do this. I was like, yeah, no worries, I'll do that. That's the way I, that's the way I used to do it until, like I said, I got this SE and it's like, I can turn the autofocus on. It's that fast. So you your, your, your excess is probably, you probably don't even need to lock the autofocus. Yeah. It's probably fast enough. Do you notice how he changes how he does things, Dad? Yeah. Doesn't, but doesn't tell us. Yeah, he shows the initial bit and then doesn't show it. <laughs> Should we put hey. it in? I'm not responsible for your learning curve. I can, only start, I can only start you off on the journey. You must you must navigate the path yourself. But we trust your judgment. And when you don't tell us of these changes, we just <coughs> assume that if it's good enough for Fox, then it's good enough for us. <laughs> yeah, but you have, to, you have to think beyond what you're given. As I'll, I'll mute his mic now, Carl, and we can talk yeah. about him as much I, as we like. I, I, I mean, I don't. I don't mind because at the end of the day, I've got a rope bridge. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Yay, rope bridge. <laughs> you know, I've got a rope bridge in the attic. Woo! <laughs> 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 Parker! <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> figure out now what else i can do on that i've got to add the orc bits next week all bits orc bits orc bits so i need to do some resin orcs during the week your task for this week print off 150 squigs various poses do you know you're not far wrong actually on, <laughs> the, on the quantity there mate <laughs> i've got Good. loads of them to print off I don't think you need to bother making anything else and just, just work on the Bane Blade now for the next six months. I think I've uh, made a rod for my own back, you know, really. It is... <laughs> yeah. You haven't, you haven't made one of them as well, have you? <laughs> God, what are you like? <laughs> he didn't just crucify himself. He made the cross and he built the hill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Retro Rabbit says Viltrox LED lights are inexpensive and have adjustments for brightness and colour temperature. Let me show you if it can move. My Viltrox LED lights. Oh, they are awesome. Oh, full screen for that. Oh, he's put them back. Oh, I put them back. Oh, look at that. How much were they? 40, 40 quid. So, oh. yeah. They've got. I'll, I'll turn it on, I'll show you. Bing. Uh, you've got a temperature control. Yeah. Well, you've got you can have brightness control, which is 100% there. You can drop oh, it down to 20%. But you've also got temperature control, so you can go between 3,300, which is like an old uh, light bulb color. Yeah. All the way up to 5,600, which is basically daylight. Oh, I like them. Yeah. How many like of them four... do you use when you're filming? Do you do like uh, the three different light sources with them, or I've got two of those. Mm -hmm. I've got I've got two of them, one on either side. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of old LED lamps up up a bit to the side. Then I've got some LED strips above. But, yeah. Uh, I think they're in I think they're in my Amazon store. But yeah, they're like forty quid. And I got these because I saw Craftsman using them. <gasps> Craftsman. He said, "I've got these Viltrox lights," and I'm like, "I'll buy them." I'll buy anything that I'll buy anything that Craftsman says he uses. Oh yeah, and Craftsman all, and Craftsman. 
Yeah. I, now, I, did get some little I, I did have to buy some little tripods for them. Um, yeah. You can get batteries for them as well but if you want to go out and about with them, but you, they also can attach to the top of cameras. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't need any of that. A bit of boom armage. 35 quid, Cole. Yeah, 35, 35 quid. Quid, expensive. Mate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, you could get yourself some of them little octopus tripod stands if you want them. But I had one of them actually mounted to uh, uh, like a metal rod that on the, in the room here. You can mount yeah. them off poles and things because you can get one of them little octopus mounts that just grips to anything. Yes. And then the lamp can be on that. So you can put them anywhere. Well, yeah, because yeah. I've got the main down lamp that pretty much all of us have got, the white one. You yeah. know. Um, well, they are, I've got a little they... magnifying lamp next to me, but the dark well you can see now look how bright your bench yeah. is and mine's always quite dark no, I've, actually not, I've actually not got them turned on right now because stream stream yard is quite good with limit low light but if i, yeah. turn, if I turn one of them on it the thing to keep in mind is though they are basically essentially fill lights they're not yeah. they're not main spotlight light sources they're no. more like fill lights so they'll yeah they're, they're really just you have them around to just add some light to the general setting it just brightens things yes. up yeah, um, then they don't cast a lot of light over a wide area. They've not got a long distance or range. No, they're quite, quite but they're perfect for what we do at the bench because they yeah, can just basically. give you light coming from each side. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have a couple of them, or you could get a handful of them and have more round. The only thing is, of course, uh, they if you if you like on me on a Monday night, I have one in front of me and one to the side. Yeah, so you can see my face. So mm. you can move them around. But I'll tell you what, if you have one facing you. Yeah, they get quite bright in your face after a little while. Yeah, I mean, I I just, when I do the Monday show, I just have my main ceiling LEDs on. Well, you're actually, you're on the Monday show, you're actually bright enough, you're fine. Yeah, because I've got uh, daylight LEDs hanging from the ceiling, and I have one of them spun straight down, sort of almost 45 degrees on my left-hand side, and it seems to do okay for the E-model show. You see, Whereas the problem when I first started, I used to have a light in front of me that used to shine from the monitors, and it used to give me a bloody headache. Yeah. Well, the problem I have in this particular room is that the overhead light doesn't work, and it hasn't worked for about ten years. And it's probably a wiring issue somewhere, but I'm not going anywhere near it. Yeah. But so I've got no overhead light in this room. All I've got is the lights on this bench, which light the bench up. Yeah. And a standing sort of corner lamp at the side of the bench, which adds yeah. a bit of fill light. So when I do a live stream, all the lights are either off to my left-hand side or behind me. Yeah. So I've got these two Viltrox, so I can have one right in front of me and one to my right-hand side mm. and move them around. So it at least lights me up while the rest of the room... But I can't put the lights behind me on yeah. because that will mess up the camera pointing at me. Yeah. Because you don't ever want lights behind you when you're trying to be on camera. So, I mean, for me, it'd be perfect if, if they was from the side because it would bring light in oh, this way. Yeah, if you had one one by your right hand side behind the camera somewhere, yeah. and then one over on the left. What's over on the left of the benches? There's something that can sit on top of. Yeah, that's all my hobby zone. Because uh, I mean, you they don't come with the. You'd have to get a little tripod or something for it to sit on. So and they can be quite big actually. Might have a 3D print something, can't I? That can. That's true. Uh, I mean, if you look at the ones I've got, I'll see if I can bring that other yeah. one over. Uh, I mean, that's the right or the left. Sorry, as you look at it, and then. This side, I've got me, me fish tank, and fish then tank. all me gubbins there, me units. Yeah, because I mean, I've got, I've got, I know you can't see them, but I've got these little tripod things here. Yeah. They're about 20 quid, and these are like, they can bend the legs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do, try and go for not the really crap ones, because the, the really crap ones break after about a week. Yeah, so. I, would, I would probably have something that can clip on and clip off somehow to the... Well, these, units yeah well i mean these ones these ones have got the bendy legs so you, yeah. these can grip onto anything um but the lamps themselves they attach by a standard camera mount yeah yeah um for some reason i've got one looks different to the other one i don't quite know but it's a so standard they camera mount. attach with a standard camera mount you could probably put them on a boom arm then oh absolutely yeah if you wanted to because i've got everything on boom arms here as you know because you have many I've boom arms have been in oh, yeah. the chair you know what i mean so yeah, i mean they're they're not they're not too heavy. They're not as heavy as a Yeti microphone or anything like that, but they're not super mm. light, but they're not super heavy. Are they as heavy as a blue ball microphone? A blue ball? <laughs> <laughs> is, that what you, is that what you meant to say there, Dad? Yeah, blue ball. 
<laughs> and of course, obviously, for cheating purposes, there is not a motorcycle over there that's been primed. Just no. thought I'd say that. I spotted it already. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, but mine hasn't got his engine in the frame, Dad. Yeah. Damn, my cutting mat needs a clean. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, check those out, dude. It's like, for, for LED lights, they are the absolute cheapest you're going to find that aren't shit. Mm. But they're actually kind of professional quality. And that's in your Amazon store on the Guru site, yeah? Uh, I think they are in the Essential Tools. I think it was on the video and YouTube section, I think. I think. Yeah, no worries. Mate. Although I'll although half the stuff it. in my Amazon store is out of stock because the, the particular link. So the downside with Amazon stores, you link to a product and that goes out of stock, but they never tell yeah. you. So. No. But, yeah, you're or just, just updating the links. Yeah, or just look up Viltrox lights. Yeah, um, yeah, the 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 most professional lights you'll get are not professional price because normally if you look at proper professional lights, they're like five hundred quid. This is it, you know. It's because I got places to have boom arms <clears throat> that, that I can just reach up and lower with the lights on it, and then I'll just push them up out the way when I'm not doing. It's yeah. a bit like when I do me voiceovers. I've got one of those honeycomb things that you, you was on about. And that sits on a boom arm, and I just pull that out when I do the voice over me. Yet he goes there, the boom arm drops with that on it, and that's what I do. I've got I've got a boom arm over there. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's a microphone. It's a it's a microphone boom arm with a yeah adapty thing on the end. I've got one over there attached to this. Dead. The reason every time I drop something, it goes echoey. Yeah. Is because the boom arm's attached to this bench, and that's a problem. I need oh, to right, find, yeah. I need really need to attach it to something else, but I don't have any options. So. Uh yeah, mine's attached to me door. I've got a pegboard that covers the window of the door that's next to me, just there. Oh yeah. And uh, it sits in a in a bracket there, so I just pull the microphone over, and I can knock it, and because it's not attached to the bench. Oh, but see, the I, webcam I, I was on just now sits there. See on the mic stand. Right. That's see, the I've cam got... that you saw just now. I've got, I've got, got like no DIY skills and nothing I could attach, bolt it to or attach it to. I've just got the clamp that goes on the bench like that. So, I've, yeah, there's, I can't attach it anywhere else. But oh, when I do, dude, when I do a live stream, I take it off that one and I attach it to the boom arm. My microphone there. is on 3D printed boom arm standage. No, I mean, I've got nothing to attach the boom arm to. Oh, right. Okay. I can't drill a hole in the wall and I can't. I've got no DIY skills. Oh, so. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. When I do the Monday show, uh, it, the boom arm is attached to my computer desk, which, of course, mm. I don't touch during the Monday show, so it's fine. You get no echo. Yeah, I mean, I've got these little boom arm mounting brackets drilled in various places around where I sit. So if I mm. need something on that side, I can just drop it in there. And if I yeah. want to change the filming angle for whatever reason. I mean, I'd love to be able to, like, just mount it to the wall so i can have it hanging down there like that and i can but i can't i can't do that in these walls they're too brittle and crumbly and rubbish to drill anything yeah, plus lovely, you know, it's all brick and breeze so i just drill anywhere yeah. and everywhere you know it's... well ours is all brick but it's all 1930s brick with 1930s plaster so uh, plus yeah. you don't want to give me a drill yeah this is the man who still hasn't fixed his light in his bedroom isn't he mate yep Lynn Dipple says, my camera is on a boom arm attached to the desk, so every time I hit the desk at Earthquake, I've got, yeah. I found, I've got uh, this boom arm here with the webcam on is attached to the computer desk, not this workbench, mm. it still does wobble a bit, but if I touch my computer desk or type, it's Earthquake, but my other, I've got one on the left hand side now, you'll see a lot of my videos now filming from the left hand side, mm. because I've got, uh, next to the workbench, I've got a little corner unit, like mm. a little tiny occasional table, mm. And I've been able to attach a boom arm to that. Mm. So I can now film from the left, which is good for me yeah. if I'm painting. I mean, I've got filming boom arm that just clicks in a mount literally just there. Man. Or I can clip it on the left over there. Yeah. I can have it, it down here. I mean, how many I've got? I've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I've got microphone boom arm camera boom arm a boom arm over there for camera a boom arm over there for microphone and who was that was that dad that and i've got another boom arm with a webcam permanently attached yeah. to it over there i've got instructions boom arm oh yeah have you got a cup of tea boom arm uh no that's that's on the bench Cup of tea. You, need, you need a boom arm that can hold a, a big massive flask of tea with a straw so you yeah. can just get so you can just go i've got the dremel one with the hook on it just drop in and I can hang my Dremel up and, and all of that. My, my airbrush actually hangs off the boom arm that this camera's attached yeah. to. Maglite boom so, arm. 
<laughs> oh, I've got I've got a lamp over there with the, on the boom arm, but I don't yeah. use that lamp, so the boom arm is going to waste basically. It's brilliant. You just get the grabber out and go, yeah, I'll have that one. Boom, boom. So yeah, I can have a pair of the boom arms up there because I do like a boom arm. You probably noticed. Uh, can I just point out we've actually said boom arm so many times in the last ten minutes. I know. Boom arm. It's like how many have I got out here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom arm. Yeah, I've got one, so one, two, three, four, five, five plus the lamp that I don't use anymore. Mm. So I've got this old, like, yeah, I've got the magnifying lamp on a boom arm. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of hardwired into it, so unless I cut the wire and yeah. remove the lamp yeah. part, I can't really use it for anything. Mm. Although I did used to actually. <laughs> I used to literally gaffer tape my webcam to the top of you know it's got like a plastic flap over the top with the lenses yeah, yeah i used to close the plastic and like gaffer tape the webcam to the top of that i'd move it up and down oh yeah my uh before i got the 3d printer my webcam was up glued to the corner of the monitor on the computer <laughs> it's amazing what you, uh, at one point i used yeah. to just use bits of packing foam that i cut into shape to mount my phone into <laughs> on it's top what of i the use for the model show that hooks over me monitor <laughs> Yeah, the webcam sits on the front of it, <laughs> right in the middle of the screen. Thunk. But before before you had a three D printer, that would have been it's amazing what me and you used to. I mean, I, I... Oh, bits of old gaffer tape, white tack, hooks, Velcro, oh, God, yeah. you name my, it. My little, my cheapy twenty year old surround system. That's a budget surround system. The centre speaker is actually gaffer taped to the top of the TV because yeah. the TV is like that wide, but the speaker stands like that wide. So I have to gaffer tape it on so it's because no one has to put it. Well, when I started doing hangouts, I had an old Logitech two seventy that was hot glued to a coat hanger, and I used to hook it on the monitor and just have it hanging. <laughs> Uh, Lynn says, I've only got one boom arm. All I'd say, Lynn, is if you want to get rid of the wobbles, if you've got any kind of little coffee table or even a chair or a stool. I sometimes, before I got this little corner table here, mm -hmm. I, we have a stool in the kitchen, like an old step stool. I used to bring that upstairs and mount my boom arm to that. Yeah. Just so it was attached to something that wasn't the desk. So if you yeah. want to avoid the shakes and wobbles, just even if it means just using a little crappy step stool or anything, you, if you've got a boom arm where it clamps like that mm -hmm. to a wooden surface, because we've got the clamps where you screw the clamp and it grips the table, anything mm -hmm. that can just, as long as it's not attached to your workbench. Yeah, you that's get... why I don't have the microphone attached to the workbench. It's on its own mount over there out of the way because yeah. like you say if you're moving stuff around on the bench you don't get that boom 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 yeah boom. i mean I'd, I'd love i love having the microphone there but i, I hate the fact there's nothing else to attach it to yeah i mean it works i mean you know especially for voiceovers because obviously when i'm doing them it extends right out so mm. i have the microphone then i have the shield in front of it or behind it and then i'll be watching what i'm doing and i do my voiceovers so the, the one thing that bugs me is that when the microphone is there, when I do a voiceover, I do it over on my computer desk. Yeah. Uh, when I do any kind of work here, and if, I, if I'm doing a, a recording, and sometimes I rec when I do like a part work, I'll record live, so I'll, I'll talk while I'm working. Mm. So I'm using the microphone over there. Because I'm talking on top of this big, flat, shiny workbench, Yeah. Uh, it gets really boomy and echoey. Yeah. Where if I sit on the other workbench, of course, it doesn't because it's not got a big flat open expanse for all the sound to echo. Yeah. So yeah. whenever you hear me doing like a, a part work or something where I'm talking at the workbench, uh, you'll you'll hear it's it when a voiceover is nice and quiet and, and soft. Yeah. A, a workbench bit where I film that is all boomy and echoey and sounds different yeah. purely because there's big flat expanse reflecting all the sound. Yeah, so. I mean, my voiceovers, I normally film where I'm sat now. I like to say I have all my gubbins, my microphone, the shield, and then I open the door behind me, so yeah. it's fully open, so it lets any of that. Out, yeah, yeah, it just know. dampens it. But I don't have that option, unfortunately. Yeah, and that's all I do. Obviously, no fans on and, and stuff like that. Yeah. I learnt the lesson. Yeah, but the the problem for me is like because when when you and I are doing voiceover, we're just sitting facing the microphone. When I'm working at this bench, I'm usually facing down here yeah so the sound's going that way and then up so it's going boom, and i yeah. can't get around it i mean for me i only have the one bench here which yeah. is why i don't have my spray booth set up i have it modular so that i can just plug yeah. it in when i need it and move it out of the way because that's my workspace i mean this i only have this one bench the, the other yeah. thing's just a computer literally i've got this workbench here which is on one now and then next to it here is a computer desk 
yeah with a computer yeah. on it and i'll sit there so i face in that way when i'm doing my live stream my e-model show yeah, I'm looking at yeah. the computer screen with the webcam and then i'm working at the bench here so oh yeah i'll sit here with the old e-model show i've got my feet on my bench yeah. feet up job done boom happy days yeah. but the there's no distracting way. thing i have is i've got a mirror cabinet behind me so i try to angle it so that you can't angle of dangle unfortunately yeah. i can't do i can't do pieces to camera while at the bench yeah um because a there's nowhere to mount the camera but b that side of the room is not business that's personal so yeah i like used this. to do camera stuff i used to have a webcam mount just here mm. but because it was so high up i looked about two foot six tall because it was <laughs> shining down at me and i'd be like hello up up there and it was like that ain't working so i just pull me green screen down behind me now and use this one so. yeah yeah but, but i mean like you know this wall and that corner that's all the, the other walls over there that's like not public yeah no i've got stuff, so i can't i can't do behind me it's right is all me pegboard with all me me uh pigments and all of that lot on it peg you know so Ooh, everything it is me. modeling you know you just reminded me i've got whole um i've got whole ass uh, uh hobby zone unit downstairs i need to build oh haven't you done it yet i'm currently 3d printing citadel paint racks mate Ooh, awesome for, take... for the kitchen door that's just there see uh, gonna, the whole door is going to be a citadel paint rack i thought you said a titadel paint rack ah, it's modular see you, no, build, thought, you build each unit and you can have small bottles you can have the big bottles Ooh, because <laughs> i've had i've had to get another one of them uh you know like i've got that there all oh, right paint, yeah. this one here with all the like the the 36 inch one yeah. I've, I've ordered another one to go over there which you can't see yeah um to go over i can't point the camera around there uh because yeah. i've got i moved all my pigments and stuff up to that rack at the top yeah that's where all my shades lived unfortunately shades are a little bit too tall to go in these, to go in these to go in. yeah so i can lie them down i've got them over there and it's like oh they're just not oh, so i've had to order another 30 yeah. 32 inch 32 mil rack uh why don't you look at um ikea uh, moffat units because uh, they've got spent, really quite deep drawers on them i've spent the money now oh right because i got, got the one next to me here and it was about 24 quid but look how deep the drawers are i've got no space for any more units any more no. units i get now are going on top of because i've got them there yeah i can't put anything on i can't really move this now i can't put anything up there because i've got brushes yeah and that's got them i can't go over there because <laughs> This one has a lamp on it, and I can't put yeah, it on top yeah. of that. And that one over, th if I can take the camera off, that one over there yeah. has a lamp on it, so I can't do anything with that. That one there is where the paint rack's going to go. That's the only place I've got. Yeah, you go can't, yeah, yeah, I'll see your problem there, mate. You're very similar to me with bench size as well, is not you? Because, like you say, you've got that old shoe around you, isn't you, when you're at the bench. Yeah. Yeah. Most people don't get to see all this stuff, actually, a lot of times. See, so. mine would be a little bit narrower than that, because I've got my 3D printing station just for me left here. Yeah. I mean, I used to have all this area here, up until last week, was spray yeah. booth. All that area here was spray booth, and I, I packed that away like you did. You inspired me to do that. Yeah. See, mine, if I go up high enough, so you've got a 3D printer just there. 3D printer. See it? Printing away. That's the filament printer, and that's currently filming. And then up there, over there, is the resin printers. The tote box is full up with 3D print filament. And then you've got all the, the ceiling You're artwork. Big fan. Yeah, big industrial fan. Is that a big boat? Yeah, that's the container ship that I'm doing on the Wednesday shows. That's the Nimitz. And then you've got shelving here with all the electronics. And then the fish tank. Shelby. What fish have you got? Tell me about your fish. Platties. Got some platties at the moment. Loads of snails in there. And then obviously all of that gubbins there. And then the obby zone comes all the way round. Like that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've just got literally nowhere yeah. to put more units and that's, now. That's my <laughs> toolbox of shame. All right. Snap on tall chest full out of all my electronic stuff. And there's the drawer where all the bits that fall off go in. Yeah. And the keyboard where everything that gets cleaned out and photo etch goes in. So, uh, yeah. You mean the keyboard, yeah. all the photo etch goes in and the keyboard? Up behind me there is the stash. 
Stash. Goes all the way along there. There's my paint racks for all my other paints over there. Mm -hmm. Citadel paints are going to live there. That's the LCD for my doorbell. So if anyone rings the door, I can see who it is. Cool. And talk to them. And then obviously, <gasps> Bain Blade. The question, of course, is where the hell is that going to go? <laughs> yeah. So, there really yeah. is no space left in that room, is there? No. And then obviously I've got my shelves over there with the London bus, the cat, and all of that lot over there. So I'm running low on space. I think a reorganisation is called for. And by reorganisation, I mean getting someone else to do it. Yeah, the missus... Under your supervision. The missus did offer to um, give me the spare room upstairs, but I said I'd end up filling it, so... But That's don't forget, done. in the lounge, I've got a 24-foot-long set of display cabinets okay. that, that I've got models in as well. That's where the Rossi bike's going to live and all of that lot. And that goes is, along is, the whole one the, wall of the lounge. Is the spare room bigger than the room you're in now? Yeah, it's twice as long and twice as wide. And you said, no, I'll just fill it up? Yeah. Do I need to come around and slap you? Yes. <sighs> Is the spare room still available? <laughs> no, it's been claimed by the wife, and I'm too scared to challenge her authority. <laughs> I can't believe... Oh, man. Do you want to have this room for your hobby? It's twice as big. Nah, I'll just fill it up. Well, yeah, yeah because the, the problem I've got as well is it's, what, 10 past three in the morning. I've got... I would have Ellen trying to sleep one yeah, side of the true. room and Lex the other side. That's true. That's um, true. You know, but he's on about moving down to Maidstone soon. And his room's four times as big as this <gasps> one. I'd get and the claws in that fucking I hell. have got my eye on it, mate. Don't get your eye on it. Get your entire arse on it. Yeah, because if he comes back home for a long weekend, you can get a bed in here. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, moment, the moment he leaves the door... Yeah. Closes that front door. I want your stuff moving in that room. So I've kind of got one eye on that, and I'm like, yeah, Festa 67's workshop. Yeah. Yeah, you need that. Because then I'd have you... to move all my fish tank and all of that lot. And it's like, That's all right. You get somebody Because you're not going to do it. Like, you're not going to do it, are you? You're going to get someone else to do it. I'd have a go. No, you wouldn't. No, we wouldn't let you. But, yeah, it's, it's one of those. I, I like this little room, though. It's quite... I don't know what it is. It's nice and compact because, you know, if I end up in the pram permanently, I can reach everything in here. Yeah, but then Are imagine you if me? you. Yeah, but then imagine if you end up in the pram permanently, you've got a room four times as big where you can move around a lot easier. Could I get a lift put in so I can lift myself up and go into Fester's workshop via an elevator, like Thunderbirds in in reverse. Oh, could you imagine that? E model streaming on like. Dun, 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 dun. You'd have to actually. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to build a little Arduino board so that every time the lift goes up, it goes... Exactly, and I could have a little, you know, the phone with me, here we go, there, yeah, they're coming in, lads. Oh, as soon as it gets there, it stops. And then when I reach the top, you hear that... Oh, the, the cabinet that the Bane Blade's in lights up and it teases you. Excalibur or, or in is fact, present. Or in fact, when, when, the, when the lift gets to its destination, it stops and you hear... Bum, 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 bum. And then all the spotlights in the room, all the spotlights in the room come on, but they have to make that. And I'll sit there and it goes with a yeah. little microphone. It's like, Spectrum is green. <laughs> and then you put a crow's nest on it. I don't know. Yeah, crow's nest on a rope bridge. Oh. Lynn Dipple says, slap Colin in the face for skipping the spare room. Okay, now that better move your stuff to that room. I'll come over and help. Yeah, but the thing about it was at the time, I just thought, because obviously I'm a bit mutton. You probably um, noticed. But what? I talk I talk loud. Your dad's still here. And <laughs> yeah, come in, Mike. Um, I, I um, talk loud because, yeah, you know what I mean? And Dad can. Yeah, if I can't hear myself speak, I think I'm mumbling. So, of course, I talk really loud, and they wouldn't get a kip at the moment. But when he moves out, I must admit, I'm thinking, you know, and I, I might have, I might have been in and had a bit of a perusal and figured out fish tank could go in the alcove there. And oh yeah. oh yeah, you've walked in, and in your brain, you've been planning it all. I've done that myself. In my brain, I've already seen the wallpaper, the decor, the ceiling artwork. Oh mate, yeah, it's. Yeah, exactly. 
So uh, just claim it now. I've I've actually put dibs in place. That's how bad it is. Because if we find out in 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 whenever he moves out that you don't get that room, but you get the spare room that you were going to get before that you turned down because you fill it up because spoon. No, I'll stand me ground and go. You had your chance. You've chosen your Robbie room. You'll stay in there, and then it means that she'll be saying, "I want the bigger room." And I go, "All right, Alpha, I'll have this thing." <laughs> yeah, stand my ground. Yeah, I'll stand me ground. <laughs> Stand my ground. Yeah. Can tell she's in bed, can't you? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, when she's in bed, you got your big pants put on now. Uh how much of your bike did you get done? Dad, is it there, is it, mate? Yeah, it's here. There it is. Not much. Look at look look that. that. I God. Nothing. It's just the engine in the frame, see? It's all for oh, assembly. Is, it, is that is that the oil tank? Is it attached no, there? Is it? No. 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 <laughs> Just the, end, just the engine in the frame, that's all. Uh, what about the rest of it on the bench? The gearbox. Yeah, it's a Larry kit. They just build fine. themselves. Yeah. I tell you something, though, for an ele ele electric, electric, it's <laughs> Ali Rary, it's gone together really well. You're just yeah. lying now, aren't you? It's, it's nice. No, You're lying for comedy. No, no, I think, honestly, to be honest with you, I think you could build that and you would enjoy it. There are lots of <laughs> no. There's, you would enjoy it, Fox, because there's loads of mold lines to get rid of. Mm, uh, no, no, no. And the tank, the tank is in two halves. Oh yeah, that big old seam line. That was good fun, Dad. No. Cool, that's nice line. and shiny, isn't it? Cool, wow. Is it primed itself? That's amazing. It's only primer. How did it do that? It's only primer. It's hilarious. Our kits pretty much paint themselves. And um, I might have done the, the bags on the back. Ah, see, Lynn, see, Lynn. Do you, you remember, Lynn, way back when, when I had that accident at the bench with the fire engine, I was sat here, and I knocked over my PVA glue, and I'm like, no, oh, it's gone all over the floor of that fire engine. So I reached for a bit of cloth to mop it yeah. up, and I knocked my bottle of flocking powder and it all flopped mm. the floor of the fire engine by itself. And Lynn was there. the floor of the fire engine. Yeah, it was a right flocking mess. It really was, mate. <laughs> did you flock it up? I did flock it up, mate. But That was just flocked up, that was. You know, Beetle Boy there that cheated before accused me of cheating. And it's like, no, 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 no. Beetle Boy. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Oh, <laughs> <Lord>, boring. <laughs> Lynn said, nice cheat bike, Dad. It, Lynn, it is. He's such a fast builder, that fella there. That's not... You wait until Monday. You watch the show. If you can't watch it, watch the repeat, because... I know what's coming. You will have your eyes opened. Mike, compare mine to Collins on Monday's show at the start. You will have your eyes open, Lynn. I'll tell you now. Because I know he's up to no good. Don't worry. Look, look, see? <laughs> look. <laughs> see? And he's he's pointing fingers at me. Hang on a minute. Have you just yeah, done look. have you have you have you actually done all that? Uh, do we have to take back all your accusations now? Do you notice he's got the frame and forks and mug guards and everything on? What have I and got? And he's also I painted and weathered it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's primer and pre-shading. Oh, okay. Oh, primer and pre That's right. Oh, primer okay. and pre-shading. Look at it. It's nearly finished. Oh, no, it ain't. What's up Come here, you top? Oh, I'm <laughs> done. I, like I like the saddlebags. See what I'm up All against. Right, mate. John Wayne saddlebags, mate. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm up <clears> against, see. Don't you try and get out of it, you weasel. up against. No, 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 no. I ain't having that. I ain't buying that. You cheated. Where's my, where's my front forks? They're not you even started the it. You started it because you said to me, how's your bike going? And I said, I've just primed me engine. Yeah? <laughs> just primed me engine. He went, oh, I spilt my lead belcher earlier. And it was lead belchers, it had had a pin wash, it had had dry, dry brushing. <laughs> Shit house. 
as he also like put like graphite on the raised bits as well. Oh mate, you know, there's me waiting for me C1 metalizer and all my oh. war hammer paint, so I've done nothing. I've got my <laughs> C1 ready to do the exhaust tomorrow. I'm gonna do the exhaust. Look at that. I am. Well, you've done your exhaust as on. Well, yes, no, I put yeah. the gloss black on. I put the gloss black on ready for the C1 mop. Uh, lovely, uh, lovely C1. C1 is lovely stuff. Where's it's brilliant. Yeah, I've used cool. it loads. So you've lovely, been lovely, cheating lovely. on your exhaust, have you? Hey. Look. What? It's it's primer. Yeah, well, that's all mine is. That's primer. Same as my tank. It's primer. My tank was primer as well, yes. You can have a spider pig for your trouble, don't you? Primer. <laughs> my mud guards are primed. So are mine. Mud guards on that. So are mine. All right, they might have had a bit of additional <clears throat> edge highlighting. And my helmet's been primed. Shiny. You polished your helmet. helmet, didn't you, mate? Polished my helmet, yeah. Uh, Lynn's saying there she's going to go back and watch last week's show and Monday's show. <laughs> Good luck with that. We might have misbehaved a little bit, Lynn, on that one. Oh, don't miss me. Oh, you've got to watch so, if you, if you haven't already watched it, Lynn, um, you might want to go to the ladies' room first and try not to be eating whilst you're watching it because I wouldn't want you to choke because we might have got a little bit childish. Uh, and she'll <laughs> announce the verdict on Tuesday. <laughs> it got very childish. Candy Graham says, I raised them parts up slowly and the white triangles on me chair look even more like orange than they normally do. Yeah, look, Gundam. <laughs> it's either that or it's Emperor Ming out of Flash Gordon. <laughs> All I've got now is in my head is Emperor Ming going, Clytus, I'm bored. What playthings yeah. can you bring for me today? <laughs> Uh, no, Lynn, we're not a bunch of cheaters. He did it. He's dad. He's got to lead by example. <laughs> Fox only cheats at Christmas with the E models build. So I yeah. do not cheat. I simply use my time more effectively. Given the fact no, that I'm you a very slow builder. in about August, mate. I need given, build, building time. He says. Given the fact that I'm a slow builder, I'm allowed to have that handicap. No, you're not. Yeah. So, Slow builder, see, so like handicap in horse racing. Don't, you, yeah, don't you side with him, you see, you so we're both slow builders, Fox. Retro yeah. Rabbit says, Our lies. <laughs> sorry, Reynolds. No, sorry, I'm not having that. He says, Also, if you watch it, Lynn, remember he's innocent. No, you no. started it with your Alexa <laughs> stuff that you were yeah. sending me, Messenger. Yes, yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah, uh, Lynn's asking what else is new on your all's show. Uh, did you just, did you just say your all's? Your all's. Your all's. Yeah. Your all's. You mean y'all? Did I say it wrong? You said your all. Yeah, it's just y'all. How was it? Oh, right. it's y'all. And she says we're not talking about Fox here. Well, Monday. We're going to be doing a bit on the bike because I've been good and not built mine. I don't know whether Dad will have much left. So yours, you might, is, yours is nearly built. <laughs> you, you might get a bit bored, folks, because he's yards ahead of mine. Cheating wet, get it. It will be, it will be by Monday. That's all right. Dad'll, Dad'll, Dad'll bring some knitting to do while you work on your bike. Yeah, yeah mine will be running, mate. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sunday, obviously, is the brunch, isn't it? Uh, which is about the viewers doing an in between, isn't we? So, yeah. uh, are you going to be work. doing any work on your bike, or, or yeah, do you want to save? Do, yeah. do you want to save the decal until Monday, or will, will you have that done tomorrow and all? Good point. Good point. Forgot about the decal then. Yeah, I'll my... do nothing on mine until my Warhammer paint arrives. I've got to say, you know, when you when when you're working on a project and you get to that point in the project where you're like. I can't be bothered to do it on it for a few days. I just want a break. And then, have you ever done that thing where you lose your mojo and then yeah. you order like one paint and your brain goes, right, all the work must now stop until I this paint arrives? With the 432, mate. 432 um, was mentioned. That's been on my bench bloody hell, about Ooh. a year now. And it spent eight months in a sprue holder just there. And it's not that I don't like the kit, it's just I needed a particular couple of bottles of paint. Um, through my own sort of lack of interest, I didn't order them. And then when I wanted to do something on it, I needed to order them. So, mm. 
But it's getting there. I'm going to start the Berlin camo during the week. But it's, I, I must admit, I've done it before. It's been like I've been working on a build that I was like bored of and I didn't want to do any more. And I'm like, oh no, I have to order some cocktail sticks. I must stop all work on this until they are. <laughs> well, that Nimitz above you there that you saw earlier, that's been sat in that spot for three and a half years <clears throat> in primer. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I must get it down and finish it, but I just can't be bothered. I've got I've got an entire Games Workshop Crusader case full of Warhammer stuff that's been primed or just built and not painted yet. Yeah, I mean we all have shelf queens, don't we? Kits that we've started that we're like, yeah. <laughs> so I say it's all right, Dad. By Monday, Cole will be into the next build whilst you're waiting for the shows each week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like Dave, bless him, just started putting his containers together, isn't he? And mind of getting decaled, I'm like, mm. yeah. I uh, Claire's down. in. She says, hey, hi, Colin, Colin, Mike Fox, and everyone in the chat. Late night joiner tonight. Yeah, um, we're we're on for about another 15 minutes, tops, Claire. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm falling asleep now, so. We're, we're just time. yattering and shooting the breeze, so. You, yeah. Fox, you must be shattered. You built one and a half figures there. You must oh be yeah, I've, I've been busy all day today. I, I'm yeah. absolutely knackered today. I've been filming all day and editing all day today. Oh, he's been a good boy, Claire. Fox has built a whole dude. <laughs> Arms, legs, everything. I'm so proud of him. Yeah. It, let's just ignore the fact I've been editing since like 10 o'clock this morning. Hold up, man. No, 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 no. The Fox book of excuses can't come out. Because what they about can. then, okay, what about on the Sunday Warhammer stream then? You know, four hours and you put an arm on. Now, come on. I'm, I'm busy excuse? entertaining the good people. That's what I'm, that's my focus. What we're doing, I'm hosting. Dad's doing his chat dollying. What's your yeah. excuse tonight? Sai <laughs> says he's built five <laughs> old boys, Fox. You're slower than the dead tortoise. <laughs> yeah, but that's only because he hasn't had to do backpacks. If you have oh, backpacks so on him. Got He's got if, an answer. If you'd he? have backpacks on him, he'd still be on the first one. I think you and so, Sire should do a buddy build on Warhammer. Me and him should sit and host it, and we can see which one of you two is the slowest. <laughs> Just give us a box of backpacks. So I'll love you for that. Sire's sitting there going, no, don't do this. You've got both build an army together. No, he's probably sitting there going, actually, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, and you've got to build and paint it together. Hmm. To what competition level? Oh, like I can paint to competition level? Of course you can. Me, me trying to compete with a twice golden demon winner is like yeah. So I say in a buddy build, have you got a year? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like no. I, I, me trying to paint to size level would be like would oh, be yeah, like be I don't so know. So funny. It would be like I don't know, giving a five year old a screwdriver and saying, right, there you go, build the car. Well, how about then to, to get Sai back into Mojo building? He sits and we do a stream where perhaps we may get an army and he teaches us how to paint properly. <laughs> I don't know if you'd have the patience for that. Could you imagine that? Like, no, don't. No. Oh, no. Oh, you, oh, you screwed us up. Us three spoons getting taught by Sai how to do it the right way. Oh, dear Lord. That would be hilarious, wouldn't it? Size go. No, 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 no. Not, not for sight, wouldn't he? You'd right. have a cut like mine, mate, after a month. Be all right, as long as you're right. He'd be like, no, no, the other end of the. Br oh. See, I'd be well up for that because I'm learning something, you know. I'd be well up for it because it'd be a free lesson from an award winning painter. I'm, I'm not going to say no to that. So I'd be like, that's like 45 quid an hour, do you mind? Size so like <laughs> teaching these are free hold dogs, no tricks. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll let him think yeah that's what my channel's for my first video is all planned it'll be out of paint oak skin to his tail oh happy days i'll have a look at that good girl say oaks mate yeah see we've been nagging simon for a good couple of years now to do some youtube stuff and he's, he's finally getting around to doing it which is awesome. yeah i'll easily i'll happily sit and watch that mate yeah Absolutely. i'll hold off painting my stuff for the bane blade figures until i've watched that then maybe. oh there you go there, there's a there's a motivation for him mm. you see edward lenders says slow builder is a minus 100 xp fox is behind in my personal opinion but i love him so he's forgiven everyone is starting off equal everyone good night everyone 
Absolutely, Edward. It's not about the speed you do it, mate, at the end of the day, is it? Mm. Cable Absolutely. side, brand new forehead, Si. I need to work out how to mate. mount my phone somewhere. Uh, use a phone mount, mate. Cable yeah, side. boom arm. No cough, boom arm. Yeah, use boom arm. Boom arm. Uh, <laughs> what I use One is there next. with a gimbal on it. That thing that Dad's got. And an expandable phone holder. I tried those expandable ones, but I didn't like the way they crushed my phone, so I prefer the one that Dad's got, because I've got a lot of those gripping hands. Yeah, it's got, got a right. nice, yep. it's got a nice soft pad on it. No, yeah, I didn't like, because the one I had was like really tight, and I'm like, I don't like the way it's crushing my phone to bits. No, it doesn't. Uh, you, it doesn't your phony won't be crushy-washy. Yeah, my £400 oh, piece of hardware I can't afford to replace. Oh. Fox, you've got to tell Claire what you're up to, because she spotted the wheel on your bench, mate. Oh, am I yeah. doing a car? Um, yes, I am doing the... This is the um, Fan Home one eighth scale Dodge Charger, Fast and Furious Dodge Charger, part work. I've built the bonnet, the supercharger blower, and I've built the steering wheel and the one wheel, and it weighs a ton. And it smells like Boba Fett. Mm. <laughs> I brought these out earlier just to show to show people. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a ten. It's a 10-year build. Yeah, 400,000 episodes. <laughs> Well, it's a bit like the Fast and six. Furious. There's like 150 Fast and Furious films, you know. I know. For someone who's never watched the film, it is hilarious. Yeah. Well, from from what I'm led to believe, it's a bit like The Bill. You remember how, like, The Bill, every British actor has been on The Bill at some point? Yeah. They churn through all the British actors. I think the Fast and Furious is the same. There's so many of the films that they've used every Hollywood actor has been in them at some oh, point. Oh, yeah. It's like, who's, who, who's gone down from being an A-list to uh, whatever? Yeah. Sorry. Look what I got, Sai. There you go. Sai, if you go into my Amazon store, there's a few things in there. He doesn't need to. No. I've got one for him. I'll bung it in the post here, mate. Oh, there you go. There you go. That'll do, yeah. Sorted. Chuck yeah, in. all you need is a wibbly wobbly bendy arm and a, a grippy thing to jam into the end of it, so. <laughs> that sounded Bench wrong. Bench clamp. Yeah. Bench clamp. Yeah, there you go, mate. You just drop that in as and when you need to, yeah. mate, and start filming. Yeah. I look just, forward to it. I'm exactly as I did. Absolutely. Just take, make sure, just make sure to attach it to thing. something that's. Oh, sorry, go on, Dad. You at the same address, Si? Take it, you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just remember to mount it to something that's not your workbench, like a coffee table or a stool or something, so you don't get the wibble wobbles. Yeah. Claire's been working on an Airfix Apollo 11 mm. lunar module, 170 mm. seconds ago. Well, see, the beauty of Sai's channel as well is I'm a Warhammer figure virgin at the end of the day, so I'd be learning Ooh. from scratch. So it's mm. perfect for me. I'm like, because I'm not set in any ways, am I? Mm. I'm actually hoping now that I can mount my camera on that side. Um, I think I'm now in a. I'm, now, now I can not have autofocus lock, and now I can have the camera over there. I think I'm in a position now where I can actually film painting figures. Yeah. I've never been able to because before in the past, all you'd see is that the back of my hand. Yeah, back of your end. Because the camera's here. Yeah. So I tried painting the, the I tried painting the dude in this, the pilot for my Lehman Russ, and it was I was I was like I can, this will be the first thing I can film trying to do painting a figure with this new camera lens. Unfortunately, yeah. he's glued into the turret, and this big ass cannon. Mm. Kept messing the autofocus up, so I couldn't film. Yeah, I couldn't film that. I mean, I'm lucky I've got mounts like I say on my left and on my right now, so I can switch stuff around. But you, you've got mounts coming out your ass, you've got mounts I everywhere. Have, you know, because I've got camera there, I've got camera there, I've got that camera, I've got the one above. So, you know, I've got 360 degree coverage. It's now OBS software tutorial, <clears throat> so that yes. I can start. Um, Sorting it out and getting it on the interwebs. Mm. So yes, you I've need to. A... You need to pin me down to show you whatever it has. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, I've been dealing with H as well and yeah, yeah. issues. So it, we've just not had the opportunity. Oh but... yeah, but you need to pin me down because I will forget and I'll just not get around to doing it. Yeah, and that's all it is really. <coughs> Ooh, you know, so I've got all the the graphics done and all of that lot ready. So it's just that <coughs> kind of. Bit. Right, guys, I suppose really we should let these lovely people go to bed because Fox is going to be asleep in a minute. 
Yes, I am. I'm very tired today. I've got to be up again in in like five yeah. minutes to go and do more editing. <laughs> so much. Uh, yeah, you're doing. You, am I right in thinking you're doing your? Is it Skyrim Saturday today? Uh, yes, there'll be Skyrim Saturday at three, but I will be releasing the first of the deck of the charger videos in the morning as well. Is that a premiere you're doing? Mate? No, no, I I'm, I'm, can't be bothered doing that. It's, it's just no. going to go live. Uh, Claire's saying there that she's a Warhammer newbie, thanks to Luke. Yeah, I'm a Warhammer newbie, thanks to these two. Yeah, but I've not fallen down the hole yet, Claire. Um, <laughs> I've not, I've resisted. <laughs> You've oh, not fallen I'm, down the I'm hole, wrong. you've just... Well, you haven't hit the bottom yet, so you're still falling, technically. No, I've got a couple of builds there, but I, I wore ammo once a week. I don't think I do, Ben. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to it once a week, because I do miss doing more ammo. I like... I like the building, because they're quick. <laughs> sure. uh, but also, it's all so I can, I can be a bit creative. Thanks again for Fox suggesting orcs. Yep. But I love the machinery and the, the madness <clears throat> of it. And then I think, well, what can I bring of me to that? So I'm exploring machinery at the moment, and I'm enjoying it. So. Yeah, you are just a you're just a war you're a war boss. You're just an orc war boss. That's what you are. Yeah. I could just say you're an orc. You could just say you're a knob. You're an orc knob. But you, you're more of a hey, war mate, boss. I don't mind. I don't mind, mate. I'm an orc knob. Your colour is war boss green, I think. Yeah, and I've got flange handles. Flange handles. Hang on, hang on. folks. Hang on. Hang on, I can find it. Oh, God, I can't find it. I can find what it. What is he doing? Claire saying to Lynn that she loves that Lego shuttle Discovery that she picked one up last Ooh, week, too. Oh, jealous. Oh, what's that? That's your colour, Cole. Jealous. What's it say? War boss green. Oh, that's See, your official brain, colour. I've got one here. Oak turquoise with an H. Turquoise. I've been trying to find that in my Citadel app, and it don't exist. Do they, do they frequently change colours? Oak, turquoise with an H. Hawk. H yeah, H-A-W-K, Oak. Oh, Hawk. Hawk. Turquoise. Yeah, Oak Turquoise. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I think that might be an old turquoise. Yeah, uh, Oak Turquoise cool. with H. <clears throat> is it? Hang on. Yeah. Uh, is it what? Is it base technical or contrast or what does it say? Just says colour, Citadel colour. Oak That's turquoise. an old paint. It doesn't say technical or base or layer or. Nah, it's just nothing like that, mate. It's just that's all that's, it says. That's an old, long out of print paint in that case. Yeah. Uh, no, not sure. I'm not me blues. Oh, hang on. I've got my phone set to black and white. That's not helping. Uh, <laughs> and I've got host blue. Host made, blue. made in France. Uh, uh, yeah. 2006. Yeah, that's a long out of... Where did you get that from? Over there. Tit. No, you mong. I mean, where did you get it from? <laughs> <laughs> you absolute knob jockey. What are you on about? <laughs> Thunder uh, Hawk. Yeah. Uh, I never noticed that they had dates printed underneath. Oh well, it looks like they're every day, didn't you? No, I mean where how long have you had that? Like uh, since two thousand six. Do you know, I've got no idea where it came from. It's it's just on the bench. It was in one of <laughs> one of my drawers from the old Because that's that's not been a colour for probably a good seven or eight years, that. Thanks. Oh, that'd be why then. That's be why. But I would have thought the Citadel app would allow that because you know, I mean, not, I'm not the only one who's got <laughs> older paints. Uh, like so that, he's put a link into. There's a oh no, he's put a link to Thunderhawk Blue. Yeah, Thunderhawk Blue 29. Yeah, no, nah, that's one. that's no. 2006 stamped in the bottom of that geese. It literally is Hawk Blue. With an H and an A W K. Yeah, Rob Turquoise. Uh, but Sai says, I think he says it's it's now Thunderhawk Blue is the kind of modern equivalent. Two thousand oh, right. and eleven on that one. That I've yeah. got and that's Thunderhawk. That mind you, even I've got some old paints. I've got some. Uh, oh, I've got what I've got. Well, stamped on the bottom. I've got to be curious now. That one's twenty fourteen, Reichland Earthshade. Twenty eleven Earthshade. Reichland Earthshade. 
You mean right of flesh shade? Yeah, that's the bloke. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, right of flesh shade. I was going to say. Shade for flesh. <laughs> What's the other one then? That's all frocks. Reckon flesh, uh, flesh shade goes over the gold, goes over retributor armor. <laughs> yep, you have a spider pig. What's the other You're one? You're thinking Something... of Agrax Earth shade. That's the bloke. That's him. <laughs> Which is liquid. Uh, what is it? A, a, a liquid Li talent. Liquid weathering, liquid, isn't it? Talent, liquid talent. Talent in a bottle. Agrax Earth shade. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Some say that when Duncan Rhodes cries, he sheds a single tear of Agrax Earth shade, and that's where it comes from. Who's Duncan Rhodes? Oh, Colin. Good Colin. Asleep. Really? God. Really? Duncan? Look, look in that mirror behind you and talk to yourself. Oh, Lord and Saviour, Duncan. <laughs> right, I'm off now then. I, I can't. There's no. Uh, Cy Reynolds, please have a conversation with. with, with, with um, well, who is Even it? Is Dad it knows who Duncan is. is. What's he do? Uh, am I getting a thing? Oh, everyone's just. Everyone's uh, just. Look, hold on a minute. Have I done? Look, <laughs> when you get a when you get a spare minute, don't be watching Lost or Wentworth or anything else on video. Watch Duncan. What are you Rose. watching later? What Duncan? Look, what channels he on? You got well, YouTube. He's on the Warhammer channel, going oh, right. way back, but he's got the Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy as well. He's, he's the guy that used to do the Warhammer TV painting videos. He's a legend. How can, oh, I, don't I, can, TV, I don't know how you've not come across the name of Duncan Rhodes in the in the years. Because uh, I started doing Warhammer when I got the Bane Blade, didn't I? I've not done it. So. No, I know, but you've been exposed to us for like the last two years. Yeah, but that means I listen to everything you yeah, tell me to watch. That's where Tooth and Coats comes from, mate. Tooth and Coats, Dun that's Duncan, that is. Tooth and Coats. Tooth and Coats is Duncan. Oh, God. <laughs> what? <laughs> listen, we've been, we've been in hangouts with Sue and Paul, and like, what have I been telling them? Do Tooth and Coats. Oh, Tooth, tooth and coats. coats. I thought you was on about Tooth and Coats. I'm like, what? I thought you said truth. He's a southerner, Dad. He doesn't understand words from northerners sometimes. He's getting, he's getting tired, Fox. I yeah. know. He's getting <laughs> weary. Look at him. Bless him. <laughs> ah, who's Duncan Rhodes? Oh, oh. never Leonard said, will you stop? I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget, where did you get it from? Over there. <laughs> Uh, oh, I've got to leave it out. Oh, Duncan Rhodes. <laughs> Our Lord and Saviour, Duncan. In that case, Carl, is he you've good? Got, in that in, case, Carl. Is he good? <laughs> Carl, in that case, right, you've got a ton of awesome painting video content to watch. Is this he is as good as Simon, though? Because Simon's no. God. Duncan Rhodes is tabletop level plus, but he's right. he, but he teaches how to paint to that level. He's, I mean, he might be. I've never seen him do anything that's like size level, but he's certainly very very good tabletop standard. But if you go to the Warhammer YouTube channel, he he left about a year ago, but. Aside from a couple of other guys, he's the guy that does all the painting videos, and he's he's just you can sit and watch him for hours. He's he's like a lovely fella to watch. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> like you, you have to go and watch him. <laughs> look at him. Look. I've been watching that Mig bloke. No, no, no. He's yeah. no, like me. watching Duncan is like watching Bob Ross, but with <laughs> extra enthusiasm. He's very polite and Duncan. That's why I probably don't know him then because he's polite. Well, Duncan once described himself, he says, if you ever meet me in real life, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm really quite disappointing, he said. Yeah, just... Dad can send you a link to, to Warhammer channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I says, will someone yeah. point out that it's spelt Rhodes? Otherwise, he'll be searching for Rhodes. Exactly. Well said, Sire, because I would have done. <laughs> yeah, with an H and an O and a D and a yes. Yes, Claire. Lynn says everyone's got to check their pin dates. Pen, pin dates? Pin Paint date, dates? What? Paint dates. And there you go. See, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. 
here he goes. Yeah, have you some of that? Claire says, did he used to work for Games Workshop? So I'm not alone. Well, at, least Claire, at least Claire had an idea that he worked for Games well, Workshop. Well, yeah, because he just turned around and said he used to work for Games Workshop. I think Claire's the same as me. We're newbies to Warhammer. We're learning, Claire, aren't we, love? But Claire hasn't been exposed to me and Dad and Sam Reynolds and Chris and Paul no. for the last two years talking yeah, about I don't, it. I don't pay <laughs> attention, do I? No. Last year, never listens to us. So, uh, there's that. Yeah. You know the nights where sometimes you'd be in hangouts and stuff and you go scratch your ear? And turn, <laughs> yes, turn, I did used and, to turn the ear and I'd often stick it on my hat, didn't I? Yeah, but I've got did. the earpiece of goodness now. Perhaps, you know? perhaps it was one of those times, Carl, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give him a looky-loo, mate, but this is probably about the same as episode five, season one of uh, DS9, isn't it? Yeah. I'll get there eventually. Uh. Yeah. Right, education for you in the future, Mister. Yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of his videos on not on his channel but on the Warhammer. Just they're great fun to watch. In yeah. fact, Dad, when you get a minute, send Colin a link to the um, RK on the Ever Chosen video. That's probably his best one. Yeah, well, well, I've, I've watched your Warhammer painting stuff. You know what I mean? Because I know you, but I don't know the bloke, do I? So yeah, oh, no, but it's, it's just it's just fun to watch. Oh, I'll give him a lucky loo, mate. He really, yeah. when, when I was first learning to brush paint, it was his stuff that inspired me to start learning to brush paint. Yeah. His his Warhammer TV stuff. I was like, oh, I like this. I like that. I'm going to get a Warhammer kit. I'm going to learn how to brush paint because I've never mm. tried their paints. And I suddenly found I could brush paint. And it was his stuff that got me into it on the Warhammer TV channel. So okay. I owe Duncan Rhodes a lot, really, technically. Yeah, Claire's saying she's only just started a war amateur journey. Yeah, and you already know Duncan Rhodes is well done, Claire. Yeah, good girl. See, it's a good journey. Colin's on that journey too, but yeah, yeah, but I haven't fallen down the hole yet. You have, you've just not stopped, you've not hit the bottom you, yet. You just don't realize it yet, but you have. I like, like, say, the mechanicalnesses of it. It's yeah. steampunky, isn't it? Some of it, you know. I, like I love it. the fact when you make some things, they they build into the design of it, like pistons and things that you can look and see. You look at it and think that kind of makes sense. Why that piston would be there because it does. Well, the... yeah. I mean, when you said about orcs, I mean, you know, when you said <laughs> crow's nest, yeah, it can have one because for me, I can throw that stuff at it and it don't look out of place. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I knew you'd like orcs because orcs is just you. Yeah, but if I did that on a chieftain tank, the armour community would be up in arms, wouldn't they? Yeah. Whereas that's what I like about the Warhammer stuff. It gives me a little bit of freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a See, bad I, thing? See, I know, I know you, I know you well enough that you would make a diorama with an orc, and an orc like war trike, like their their war motorbike, mm. but you'd have it in like a diorama of a kitchen with it on the kitchen table in bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. See. And there you well. go, folks. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll love Ooh. and leave you then and wrap up for the night so that Fox and Dad can go to Bub Eyes and I can have me dinner. Go and have your dinner. Yeah, because I'm going to watch a bit of the old MotoGP uh, free practice. MotoGP. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So thanks for joining us mm -hmm. uh, for a rather informative <laughs> end to the show there. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can all point the finger at shame at me and obviously at Dad as well for cheating on his motorbike. Just want to get uh, that one in there. Compared yeah. to you, I have I'm going to go on. off and have a beer with my good mate, Duncan. <clears throat> <laughs> and don't forget, folks, check the dates on your paint. See who's got the oldest one. Check those paint dates. See you all later. Thanks for joining Adios, us. Adios, amoebas. Bye, bye. Bye, <laughs> bye all.